All right, here we go, French Montana. Welcome back to Vlad TV. <laughs> Big Vlad, man. How long has it been, baby? It's been 12 years. Fuck, man. It's been 12 years Fuck. since our last interview, man. Fuck. And you know something? Me and you, I feel, are like the same freshman class. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, me and you started around the same time. Matter of fact, now that I think about it, when you had Cocaine City uh, DVD, I had Hot in Here DVD. Yeah. We used to wait at the labels side by side. Yeah. Waiting to interview artists. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. One million percent. Right. And then when Vlad TV started, you were one of the first people that was was kind of like a regular guest. You yeah. were one of my first regular guests on the show. Yeah. Actually, one of, one of my biggest videos was um, with you was I'm So Special. Right. Yeah, right. That, yeah, that video is what started my career. People like everywhere I go, they're like, yo, perform I'm So Special. Yeah. That like yeah, the start. Man. It was we right was before rocking with each called. other early on. Yeah. And we'll uh, we'll be back. Full yeah, cycle. Yeah. Many millions of dollars later. <laughs> You had a few more millions than I did, but I got a few millions, you know? Now you live five <laughs> minutes away from me, man. We got the same millions, baby. Hey, man, listen. We live in similar neighborhoods. For real. Eat the same food, wear the same clothes. For real, man. Hey, man, we're, we're both happy, and yeah. I'm glad that you are where you are right now. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. And I've been out. And you know what? And I was listening to interviews, and I was like, when you, the interview you had with Yayo, and I was mm -hmm. like, I got to go see Vlad. They speaking highly about me over there. Yeah. And that's my guy since day negative one. Yeah. So, yeah, you know I've never saying? bashed you. Never, 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 yeah. never. Appreciate that. Of course, man. Of course. Well, we've done a lot of interviews, but I want to get the whole story this time. Yeah. So I want to start in the very beginning. So you were born in Casablanca, Morocco. Yeah. Okay. And at the time, it was you, your father, your mother, and a younger brother. Yeah. And you were there until you were about 13 years old. 13, yeah. Do you remember Morocco at that time? Yeah, I remember my father um I remember my father working. I remember he was he was selling gold and he was just in and out the streets. Cuz when I when I was born, he was locked up. So he was in and out of jail the whole time. Locked up for what? Um I don't know. I, I don't even ask. Okay. You know what I'm saying so he was locked up. He was in and out the country. He was doing his thing. So I remember I remember him my mother just used to be a stay-home mom and he used to be and not the country again, again his money. And when I was thirteen, I just remember him like, "Yo, um, you know, we got we got visas. So maybe he got the visas to get out of, you know, what I'm saying to get out of country for some pair of reason or whatever it is. But I didn't know what the what the cost was. But I know he he saved up enough money that he can go to the United States and 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 try to live the American dream mm -hmm. and take his kids over there because honestly, there wasn't no opportunities in in, in, in North Africa like that." I mean, you were both uh, immigrants. Yeah. I was born in Ukraine. It was USSR mm -hmm. at the time. So for both of us, English wasn't our first language. No. So you speak Arabic and French? Yeah. Okay. Do you still speak French? Well, when, when we came from um, Morocco, my mother my mother never spoke French. So um, I just I just kept on speaking to her in, Mor in Moroccan, which is like broken Arabic. It's like Jamaican English. Oh, huh, like a patois kind of? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. If I would speak to somebody from... from you know, from Dubai or from Iraq or from the people that really speak the 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 real Arabic, they won't they won't even understand what I'm saying. So it's really? like yeah, so like it's broken Arabic, Moroccan speak. So um, you know, when my mother came back, I was speaking French to her, but I lost like half of my French, but I'm I'm still fluent in Moroccan. Okay, so when you go to Paris, do you understand people speaking French? Yeah, or? yeah, I, I mean I can understand. You I just can't really speak. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's just like being away from somewhere for so long. It's like you lose you lose that. Okay. The lingo. Okay, and you guys settled in the South Bronx. Yeah. Okay, so you were in the South Bronx for two years when your dad decided to go back. Yeah, when my when my dad decided to go back, he uh, he kind of came and he kind of tried to do a bunch of businesses. You know, he started the first business, it 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 went bad on him. The second one, it went bad on him. The third one, it went bad on him. The fourth one, he took me with him to pick up some money that some people owe him. We went there. They didn't have the money. He broke the whole store. Hmm. It was just getting bad at one point. So he just, it got to a point where he submitted for his papers and they denied him. So he went back to Morocco. Okay. Your mom was pregnant with another baby. Yeah. At that time. Yeah. That's a little weird, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Leaving three kids, well, two kids with one on the way behind to fend for themselves. Yeah to go back to your original country. Because like I said, I'm an immigrant also. I can't yeah. imagine my dad leaving me and my mom and going yeah. back to Ukraine. Like, that sounds crazy to me. Yeah, yeah it was crazy because he told, he told my mother, he, he told my mother, he said, let's leave Kareem behind, which is me. 
He's like, he's like, let's leave French behind and let's take both um, the kids and go back. My mother was like, I'm not going back. But you were what, 13 at the time? Yeah, I was like, yeah, like 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 16. Okay. At that time, like two years we was there. So like, like, yeah, like two, three years. And she was like, I'm not leaving my son. So he was like, if you want to stay, stay with him. I'm going to leave. Well, how would a 16-year-old survive? I don't it know. doesn't make any sense. doesn't make That's no sense. It's a weird sense. question, right? Because you got to remember, I don't have my papers. Ha. Uh-huh. So I came here on an I-20 visa. So I-20 visa, it burned out after six months. Mm. So his his plan was, like, once we get to the States, we figure it out. We got to the States, the I-20 visa burnt out. So basically now I'm living like an alien. I'm like, I can't get no job because I don't have my papers. I can't go to college because I don't have my papers. You know what I'm saying? I can't do nothing normal that every American take for granted. I can't do nothing normal. So basically it's like I'm locked up without being locked up. So a kid that's 16 years old, like what, what is he supposed to do but sell drugs? Mm-hmm. Or, you know what I'm saying? That's the only thing you you can do. Or, or just hustle anything. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you just got to. And when you sell drugs, you can't really sell drugs because if you get locked up one time, you get deported. Aha. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> so it's like you. It's like it's like it, it's an impossible situation to make it out. Huh. You know what I'm saying? So I was 16. He left. When he left, I basically became my mother's husband, and my 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 brothers was became my two kids. Yeah. So I had a family before I even think about having my own family. Right. You had three kids or well, two kids, basically. Yes. And and, 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 and mind you, my, support. Yeah. Mind you, my mother don't speak English, so she never picked it up. Never picked it up. She still don't didn't pick it up until now. Huh? She don't. She doesn't care about it. She's just here for us. She's like you know. She know a couple words here and there. We'd be laughing at her still, but <laughs> she never. She never picked it up. You know what I'm saying? So she's. She basically just sacrificed. Okay. What year? Well, how old were you when you started hustling? Around that time, around six, 16, 17. Yeah. Okay, what did you start with? Fuck, wow, man. Everything, everything you could think about. Weed, coke, crack, anything you think about. I mean, that's a treacherous lifestyle. Yeah. I know I dabbled in it and got burned and said, there's enough. Yeah, me. yeah. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, we, you know, it was, it was just, it was, it was, it was crazy. And we was, we was doing it right in front of a post office, like a La Fontaine on East Streamer, like me, my, my Oh my God, we was just like hand in hand. We was, you know, then you graduate to different things and, you know, but it, it was, it was the only way, you know what I'm saying? Like we would see everybody doing it out there. Like the whole time I'm living there, I'm going to school, coming back, there's somebody hustling in front of the building. So after a while, I just, they became my best friends, you know what I'm saying? So. Well, I know there was a serious situation that came a little later. We'll talk about that. Yeah. But during this time. Yeah. What were the craziest situations you were getting into? Fuck. Uh, a whole lot of shit, ducking robbers, you know what I'm saying? Just it just every night you out there, every day you out there, you liable to get you know locked up, you liable to get shot, you liable to you know shoot at somebody, you liable to get robbed. It's just and things like that was happening every day. You know what I'm saying? Like one of my homeboys would, would grab an AR and just go rob the restaurant right across the street, come back in the building while I'm still selling crack in front of the building. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like things like that. You know, then they go to the roof, they letting shots off while we hustling in front of the building, making the block hot. It was just it was it was it was just so many things. You know what I mean? Everybody out there dusted out, smoking angel dust and it, it was it was just crazy. Which is PCP. Yeah. And we had a and we had a a, a restaurant that was moving weight while we was hustling three buildings down. So it was it was like that block was definitely like snowfall. Mm. Yeah, the movie. Okay. Okay. At what point did you say eh, maybe I'll be a rapper? Um point where I said I'm be a rapper. It was when I got locked up for what? This time I didn't get locked up with, with no cocaine, with no crack. They ain't catching me on the block. They, I got I got locked up with like twenty pounds of weed. It's a lot of weed. Yeah, I think I, was, I was, it was like twenty twenty between fifteen and twenty pounds of weed. Yeah, but you told me earlier you have no papers, so if you get locked up, you get deported. Yeah, so I got so I got caught with like fifteen twenty pounds. But it was it was weed is an R and R. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not it's not really like 
a serious crime. But still, you're an illegal alien. Yeah, I'm an illegal alien, but... So don't they just deport you over anything? No, or? but ICE wasn't that serious back then. Ah, okay. See, ICE ice is serious now, you know what I'm saying? Cause my now brother, they'll send you back. Yeah, yeah, my, yeah. My, my brother went through that. So ICE, ICE is serious now. But back then, if you ain't get caught with nothing serious, like, you know, like no cocaine or like no murder or nothing like that, like you get it, you, you can get your one pass. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So I got my one pass. So basically back then it was just... It was just that I got once I got locked up for that. One of my homeboys said he was gonna take the case for me. Oh, okay. So they was gonna take the case for me. So we we go to the courthouse. So my homeboy, so he was with me. This is like a funny ass story. I ain't gonna say his name, but so we was in the car and get caught with the weed. So my homeboy is like, Nah, you, you, I can't let you get deported. We got to take this case for you. You know what I'm saying? Weed is, is it ain't that serious. Is you know what I mean? I'm gonna get a slap in the wrist. There's no time. So I'm like, ah, right. I'm like, yo, this is the realest nigga ever. So I'm like, boom. So the the court date come. We all go to court. This and that. He's up there. So the judge is reading him his rights. Like, ooh, this and that. Ooh, he talking to him. He's like, yeah, man. So it's a possibility of 30 days. He was like, hold on, judge. <laughs> 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 Can I talk to you for a second? This is the middle of the, this, this, this you actually the, middle, in the courtroom? Yeah, this is in the middle of the courtroom. Okay. He was like, yo, Fresh, can I talk to you for a second? So I'm like, oh, man. So he was like, yo, he's like, yo, 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 can I speak to him outside for a second? So he goes, I said, like, bro, you told me it was no time. This and that. Like, yo, bro, it's fucking weed. It's 30 days if you do some real time. So, you know, long story short, I went back inside and I had to take the case. Oh, so he was like, I'm not gonna take this. <laughs> nah, for you. Was like, it's like, only a month though. And that's what I'm saying. He, he was like, Nah. That. He was like, I can't, I can't get locked. <laughs> <laughs> you still friends with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you I forgave still, him for that. Yeah, huh? yeah, I forgave him, man. Okay. You gotta forgive, man. If, if if God can forgive us, we can forgive, man. Okay. We ain't we ain't bigger than the law. Okay. So did the rap thing start after that? Yeah. So the rap rap thing started when it was just like, is either you're gonna do this, or just go back to Africa. It's like. Oh, just like go get a job, which is twelve hours, like a Mexican, and, and get paid ten dollars, five dollars an hour. You know what I'm saying? It was just like it was less. So basically, that's when I started. I went to my man crib, but I always had love for music. You know what I'm I always had love for music. I would always, you know, buy everybody CDs. I would pick up. I would catch myself trying to make beats, this and that. So I went to my man crib. We recorded right in the middle of his living room. It was a recorder. I remember exact the exact beat. It was lyrical exercise, Jay Z, which that he sampled from Carl Mega, mm -hmm. and it was just like how nice to just have my my headphones on. I used to walk around the block while everybody's selling whatever. They something like, yo, you like this joint? Like this joint? So I just putting it on everybody's he head. Then I just met some cats that had a little thing going on. Then, then I was just like, yo, let's make it happen. Okay, and you were young French back then. Yeah. Okay. Started out battle rapping. Battle rapping for sure. All right, so right there in the Bronx, you would just battle dudes? Yeah, because rapping is one thing, but coming up, the era that I, that I came up, it was just like, yeah, you could rap, but he could rap too. He could rap too. He could rap too. How do we know which one's the best? You know what I'm saying? So people would come, like, my, shout to Fred the Godson. He used to come mm. with Virginia Slim. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. He used to come with his partner. They used to be, they used to be two in the group. Him and Virginia Slim, they used to call Loose Cannons. They used to come. Shells, uh, Oom P. It was like it was a whole Bronx culture that we all used to meet up. We would end up in the back of, we would end up in the back of Rough Riders videos, shoots with D and Y. Uh -huh. And it was just like, yo, drag on to be in the back. It was just like, it was raw. It was, it was that type of raw. And everybody would just like start battling. You know what I'm saying? And that was just like kind of a way to, to see who's nice. Because just rapping, wasn't going to get you a buzz. It was just like, all right, he can rap. You know what I'm saying? But you had to eat people face off. And that's how DMX got his name. That's how Cassidy Cassidy got his name. It was it was a wave of you, you had to go wherever there was the illest rappers. And you had to prove yourself. And we had to do that millions of times. What are some known rappers that you felt you beat? That I battled? That, point, that you battled, yeah. That well, me and Murder Mook was supposed to battle like like ten different times. We would catch each other. We would just talk mad shit to each other. And we would set it up. <laughs> then I would have to battle somebody else. I mean, I battled like what? Who? Who I battled? I battled Scar Child. I battled like I battled like a bunch of. I battled in Fight Club. Oh, yeah, okay, we, I missed we, that. Shot the International P and Fight Club. Yeah. Shot the J and them. 
we went up there. We put up like fifteen thousand dollars, huh. and we we battled. Somebody got that? somebody got cut while we was battling. Oh, sliced. So yeah, oh. in the middle of the battle. So we had Damn. yeah, it was it was just like every hood was in there, and I guess somebody saw somebody back then. We was like on the second round. I think I think it's in it's in, it's in one of the Cocaine City DVDs. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Because because I met you after the battle rap. Yeah. French Montana. Yeah. Right. Okay, so at what point did the battle rapping turn into Cocaine City DVD? Well, things like this used to happen, right? I used to be on my block chilling, and I used to know, like, Booby the Boxer, which is one of my homeboys, Big Pun will pull up on us. Big Pun will pull up on us, he'll play as Capital Punishment. You know what I'm saying? He used to have his bands, the silver bands that he used to have his custom-made seat in there. He'll come, he'll hop out, play as the joint. You know, KRS One was down the block. Slick Rick was in Gun Hill. It was just like everybody. Used to, Fat Joe used to pull up all the time. Dipset, Luca Brazi and Dipset used to always pull up to the block because Luca was doing Taliban things with him. So I used to see everybody. So the reason why rap became such a reality for me is that I could touch everybody that was famous. So it was a time where every DJ had a rapper. Uh, K. Slay, rest in peace, had Pap Hoos. Mm -hmm. Greenland had Uncle Murder. Clue had Fab. Yeah. Um, 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 Envy had um, Red Cafe. Mm, yeah. And you was not going to make it into that radio unless you signed to a DJ. Aha. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah so, I remember that era. Yeah. Yeah. So for people like me and for people that was coming from the Bronx, it's already hard to make it. We didn't have no outlet. You know, after all this battling, after almost getting ourselves killed and everything, we still have no buzz. So I was watching um, Smack DVD, me and my boy um, at, in the crib. We was like, yo, we know all these artists, but what can we do that if we do a DVD, it can't look like Smack? We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna jack the idea, but let's add our own twist to it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I knew Pee Wee Kirkland. We knew the, 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 you know, all, the, all the drug dealers around, around the way. So it was like, how about we call it Drugs on Music? Where... We need a message, right? We come from this life of negativity. Let's show the artists or the rappers that's coming up that this is the real drug dealers that the rappers rap about. You know what I'm saying? So this is how you're going to end up. This is how this story is. This is whatever it is. So you know, like, so we called it Cocaine City because just a negative just spreads faster than positive. Hmm. So we called it Cocaine City. You're going to grab it. But once you grabbed it and you watched it, you're going to sit back and be like, oh, wow, this is what happened to Pee Wee Kirkland? This is what happened to Guy Fisher. This is what happened to this person. This is what happened. You know, so we always had a message with it. So we grabbed the drug dealers and we grabbed the artists. And we I used to put myself in the middle of the DVD. So instead of paying Smack $25,000 to get on his DVD, we created our own DVD hmm. that we going to promote. And by the time, I know by, by the time the the... the the sixth mixtape came out with DJ Clue. We was like, who Fab is? By the time the sixth DVD came out with me in the middle, Akon called up Gabby like, yo, mm -hmm. who this kid is? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So my idea worked. Right, right. But what you're not mentioning right now. Yeah. Because I had a DVD during this time. Also, yeah, I yeah. went for the mixtapes. The mixtapes were going away yeah. because the mom and pop stores were going away. Yeah, yeah, hell right? yeah. And CDs in general were going away. Hell so yeah. I, I kind of pivoted into DVDs, mm -hmm. kind of like Smack, but I yeah. had my own thing of it. I would yeah, get yeah. freestyles and interviews. I was more on the interview side. Yeah. But every every brand has a, a, a thing that makes it different. Yeah, exactly. Right? Smack definitely had a thing that made it different. I was still trying to figure out my thing. Yeah. But what made you different with Cocaine City, because remember, I was right there. Yeah, yeah. Was that you had a level of drama oh. that other DVDs did not have. Yeah, it was like the craziest shit yes, ever. It yes, was like, the it was Cocaine like, City it was like DVDs band, it was like had band, a level of crazy it was like that band everyone else was a little worried to touch. It was banned like banned from TV. It was. I remember there was a couple moments. Yeah. There was Lil C's naked. Yeah. Shot the, yeah, yeah. <laughs> when I say naked, it was like him in like a hotel room. He kind of like, he had like a, a towel on. He took his towel off and you could see everything. <laughs> Not that you wanted to see it. <laughs> oh my god but unfortunately you did shout out to Lil C's right. man we, we, we cool as shit now right and then there was the I think what kind of you know cause you always need that one big thing yeah that kind of gets everyone talking about you yeah 
and it was Jim Jones and, the, and Cameron getting jumped at Rucker Park. Yeah. You put that out. I'm saying this because you and Jim and Cam are cool now. Yeah, yeah, of course. But the history is the history. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but cocaine, cocaine City was basically everything that couldn't be out yeah. on BET, MTV. It was even wilder shit than that. You know what I'm saying? So, what was some of the crazier stuff that I'm not mentioning right now? What's crazy? What's crazy that you're not mentioning it? Because those two stood out to me. But what else am I missing? Because I didn't get every volume, but I was watching. I would have to go back and check. Okay. But there was always to... a level of There was of crazy. always something crazy. It was, right. Yeah, it was definitely crazy. But there was this this guy named Sunkiss. Yeah, I remember. That used to have people. Battle with the Terror Squad? Or? Yeah, that he used to have people battle. And whoever wins the battle get the fuck a bad bitch from the back. And I doubt what <laughs> we we used to have some wild shit going on. So if you if you win, you get to you get to pick whatever bad bitch you want. You go out to dinner with her. You get to fuck her. Then he films it. He puts it out. Woo. That was that was one. Of the, and I remember he came on the DVD after. Maybe you could play his clip right after. I'm, I'm, okay, I'm, you I'm give me permission to play it. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can play his clip, of go course. Ahead. And he's like, "Yo, this is Sun Kiss." I do battles and bubbles. If any of y'all niggas take my ID, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I'm going to throw all this shit away and I'm going to kill you. That's what stood out to me out of all the joint. Look, my name is Sun Kiss Bronx Nation, B. You know what I mean? And um, I want to make a little disclaimer right now, B. I got this shit called Battle for the Bottles and the Bubbles. Rappers battling the winner get the fuck a slut, a big butt slut, B. I'm going to say it one time. I'm not trying to be gangster. I'm, try I'm not trying to intimidate nobody. I'm dead serious. If anybody come out with my idea of rappers battling and fucking, I'm gonna murder you. Strap me down, I'm gonna fucking murder you. No, I'm not trying to sound like no, I'm not trying to make it scare you or sign of emphasize no gangsterism and all that, but I'm dead serious, B. I put everything on the line for this. This is my creation. I created this idea and I'm, I will murder you, dog. I don't give a fuck if you a cocaine, motherfucking kingpin, crack kingpin, murderer. You got 80,000 wolves gonna come after me after I murder your ass. I'm ready to take the consequences for that. This is my food, B. The Sun Kiss Battle for the Bottles and the Bubbles, and, and it's gonna be just like that. No other niggas coming out with Battle for the Bottles and the Booty and all that. I'm gonna murder you. And understand, I'm gonna I, I'm, I'm take the consequences of going to jail or getting 90 niggas to murder me. I'm all good with that. As long as I murder your ass, sh shoot you in your motherfucking skull, I'm ready to take the repercussions after that. This word to my mother. I'm not trying to impress you with gangsterism and all that and flash. Uh, letting you know my sun kiss is not playing this is my shit don't bite my shit that's what it is man. okay well and i'm just kind of setting up a timeline yeah a couple years later in 2006 jim jones drops we fly high aka yeah. ballin yeah which was written by max b i don't know if it was written by max b. well max b worked on that song though didn't he i don't know i okay. don't know i don't know this situation. well max b was down with they're working together didn't they? yeah however you want to However yeah. you want to, uh, you know, describe it. Max was part of Bird Gang, which was Jim Jones's crew. Yeah. Did you know Max during that time? No. No. Okay. Because a year later, you came out with French Revolution Volume 1, 2007. Um, was it a year later? That's your French Revolution. Yeah, I remember dropping. I, I, don't, I don't remember the exact year. I think it was that year. Yeah, all right. Yeah. And that had Stray Cash on it. Yeah. Uh, that was your first song that kind of started to buzz. Yeah. And by this time, you've been putting in years of work. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is not something that came overnight for you. Yeah, yeah. I was putting out a bunch of freestyles on the DVDs, but I never really put out, like, official songs of mine. Right. And Stray Cash was the first song that really... Started to, you know, buzz and people yeah. start playing and everything else like that. And you started getting some shows around this. And from what I understand, uh, Connecticut was the one that first showed you love. Yeah. Shout out to my man, Jake. Yeah, yeah shout out to he, Jake. I think he booked you for your first show. I think he did. Yeah. I think he booked me for my first show. It was me, Max B, and Maserati Fox. Rest in peace. Got it. Is that around the time you met uh, Max B? I think that is the time I met Max B. Okay. And what was it about you two that really got you tight? Um... I had motion in the Bronx. He had motion in Harlem. Um, basically, it was, I had the DVDs going. 
this this what happens. I had the DVD game on lock and I had my music thing going. He had music on lock and I was like, yo, bro, I said, if me and you put a mixtape together with a DVD, Mm -mm. I think we'll be the biggest thing in the city. I had that vision. I was like, yo, bro, I see you putting out your mixtapes. I'm putting out my mixtapes. I put out French Revolution. I did all this. He had a million dollar baby. I, I forgot what other mixtapes he had. I'm like, yo, bro, we got a buzz. Like, we we there. But if me and you get together and do Coke Wave and we slap the Cocaine City brand and do like we was like ahead of our time, DVD with a mixtape. So when we did that, oh, hell broke loose. Yeah, I think uh, me and Game did something like that yeah. around that time as well on okay. the West Coast. Yeah, I copied, so, copied from me. Possibly, yeah. No, no, I'm joking. Probably. Maybe. You know, I mean, I mean, all of us were kind of, you <laughs> yeah, know, it was the, the same. same. That we was all doing we were the same, same fishbowl trying to figure yeah, it out. Shout, shout out to I Chuck. I may have. Yeah, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, shout out to Chuck. <laughs> shout out to everybody, man. We, yeah. we were all trying to figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We was all, yeah, yeah we was all shout trying to New figure Jersey out. New Jersey Devil, he did it with me as well. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. But that, that was kind of like the wave because like mixtapes were kind of yeah. in transition and DVDs were the hot thing. So yeah. to put a DVD and a mixtape made a lot of sense back then. Put both worlds together, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um, but that same year, 2007, Max B gets arrested for murder. Mm-hmm. Allegedly. Well, he gets arrested for it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no legend about that. <laughs> Whether he did it or not, yeah, who yeah. knows? Yeah. But he gets arrested. Yeah. Now, he makes, you know, makes bail, so he's still out. Yeah. But he has that hanging over his head. Mm-hmm. You also get married that same year. Mm-hmm. And uh, you end up having a son a few years later. Yeah. So then that next year, you put out your second mixtape, Live from Africa. Yeah. How did that one do? Um, I don't remember how I do, but, I did, but it, it, all my mixtapes did good because people love when I drop mixtapes. Mm-hmm. Right. And then you start working with Max B. You guys put out the song Wavy. Yeah. And then, like you said, I think it was around 2009, you and Max B dropped Coke Wave. Yeah. How did people really react to that? Man, it was... You can't go to a car that wasn't playing it in the city. And like it was just it just took the city by storm. I mean New York loved movements. So yeah. you know, when we got together and we just dropped Coke Wave, it was just like, you know, the biggest movement in the city. Right. And then you guys dropped uh Coke Wave two. Coke and relatively three. quickly. Yeah, Coke Wave two and Coke Wave three. Right. This yeah. is when me and you meet. Yeah. Right around that time. I had the studio in Chinatown. Yeah. No, we kind of, we, we met we met before uh, Coke Wave. Oh, yeah, no, no, you're right. No, yeah, yeah, we met while doing DVDs. Yeah. But I'm saying, but Vlad TV. When did I do um, So Special? I'm So Special. Right around 2009. Yeah, so I did that before I got with Max B. Okay, right. Yeah, 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 you're right. I'm trying to, the timeline's a little fuzzy. It's yeah, a long yeah, time yeah. Ago. I did but yeah, that. Vlad TV launched in 2008 yeah. in LA. I moved back to New York. And then mm-hmm. right around 2009, I had that studio in Chinatown. Mm-hmm. And then... Me and you start doing interviews, and we start filming some of your music videos yeah. and putting them up on our YouTube channel. Yeah. And it was like, okay, this is one of the hot yeah. dudes in New York. This is, you know, this is this this is very important for young artists coming up and young entrepreneurs to hear our story, though. Yeah, it's just it's just because it's so many so many entrepreneurs and, and and rappers that's coming up in the game that even even like you know when you look at everything that's going on, it's hard for them to fit in. So what we did was kind of something that's so special when we was ahead of our time. So now, if you were a young artist, you got to really pay attention and, and, and always try to go through the window when everybody's trying to get through the door. That's what we did, you know? Well, it was a bunch of dudes that were like in their late 20s, early 30s, mm-hmm. that were hustling in New York, trying to figure out yeah. where we fit in. None of us had deals. Yeah. None of us had money. Exactly. Shout out to Fendi. Yeah. Fendi had to come Fendi up. Fendi had to come up DVD. Yeah. There was a bunch shot of different DVDs. T- Terrell Blair and um, shot the um, tone in them. They had um, streets. Um, they started doing a documentary. They started doing, um, I forgot what they call. Fuck. But they had all the documents. Shout out to Sub-Zero. Sub-Zero. That was another one. After. Yeah, yeah, we were all in the same fishbowl. Yeah, we created, we created like, a, like, like, like a whole movement. Right, this is before you two. Yeah, yeah. So right. We, we or, no, the, YouTube was still no. YouTube was very early in yeah. the process. YouTube actually was around at that time. Yeah. It was 2008 when YouTube. shot the smack man. He's he he he, he was the king of it. all. He created yeah. he created something yeah, he, that, he that, that got, that got us all this. out the hood. 
that got us all like situated. You know what I'm saying? I think all of us benefited off of that. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, and then you hooked up with Harry Fraud. Yeah. And you guys put out New York Minute. Yeah. Featuring Jadakiss. So the, the thing is with Harry Fraud is when Max B got locked up, I was the most blackballed artist. You know what I'm saying? And 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 nobody wanted to fuck with me because, you know, it, I was just, you know, we was beefing with everybody. Right. Well, Max B was beefing with Jim Jones. Yeah. And you were aligned with Max so B. Actually, Max B, so that's how that thing happened. Yeah. But it's like I was the most blackballed artist, so everybody counted me out. It's like I was just about to get my deal. Max B about to get his deal. We was just about to take off. Max B gets 75 years. Well, he's not locked up yet. No, but, no, but, but he's facing 75 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is, this, um, this is after he got locked up. I mean, no. We haven't gotten there yet. Okay, all right. Yeah, he, he got arrested, but remember, he was still out. He was fighting it. He was fighting it. Yeah. He was dropping music, dropping music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I remember Max during this time, man, like, you could tell how heavy it was weighing on him because yeah, yeah. he was always drunk. Because he was drinking gallons of Henny every night. Gallons. Like, yeah. I remember I went to this to uh, Dame Grease's studio. I met you. That's where we did that one interview. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, talked yeah. about the shooting. Yeah, Mount and we were Vernon. trying to do something with Max, and Max was just falling down drunk. It was Mount Right. Mount, but I can imagine if I had a murder hanging over my head, I'd yeah. probably be the same way. Yeah. It was, yeah, I remember. It was, yeah. Mount, it was in Mount Vernon. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So, New York Minute was a song that started to buzz, and Mace jumped on it. Mace jumped on it. He Mace Mace wasn't rapping at the time. Right, he was he, Pastor Mace. Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> and he just loved the song. He just, you know, we we, we got the government and he just did a verse on it. And Nicki Minaj jumped on it. Right. Yeah. Yeah, well, Nicki, actually, I remember Nicki came by my studio. Well, the studio I was renting a table from, yeah. essentially, in Chinatown, just to do a verse. Crazy. And I remember we were sitting around and no one knew who she was. And she yeah. got in the booth and everyone was like, who is this? Yeah. Like, damn. Like, you know, certain people. yeah, yeah. yeah. Are just so good that you just have to stop and notice. Yeah, yeah, exactly. She was one of those early yeah. on. Yeah, exactly. Right. Now you end up hooking up with Gabi mm -hmm. from SRC. Yeah. He introduced you to Akon. Yeah. And then you signed like a shopping deal with Akon. Yeah, Akon was trying to sign me to a fucking ten year contract <laughs> to Convict. <laughs> <laughs> but Gabby was my um, he was my manager at the time. He pulled me to the side. He's like, bro, you know you're not signing that, right? So Gabby was already up on Kanye. I mean, on on Akon. He was like, yo, we're gonna sign a shopping deal. Let's see what he could do. Right. He ended up not getting you a deal. Yeah. Right. Is this around the time he gave you the fake watch? Nah. <laughs> that came later. <laughs> <laughs> I came way after. <laughs> I came way after. That, matter of fact, it was like two year, a year. Matter of fact, it was. It was right. around the time. Yep, it was. It was me and Max if you went to go see him. Yep. Right. He ended up giving you a real watch later on. I don't know. I got to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> I shot to Akon. That's my man. Like, you got to understand. Akon, like, I love Akon. Nah, nah. He, nah that's I my love guy. Akon. He always does interviews. Uh, nah. let, me tell, let me tell you something. What people don't realize is the opportunity he gave me meant more than any watch he could ever give me, more than anything. Me and him always joke around. Like, this is like, like, this is like our jokes. Like, when I see him, I'll be like, yo, what's up with the watch? We'll laugh. Right. But him giving me that opportunity kind of, you know, you know when you believe in yourself, but when somebody else believes in you, it just takes it somewhere else. And that's what he did for me. So to, to Akon, I tell my hat to him. He's like, you know, one of my favorite people in the world. And here's where things are going full circle. And this yeah. is, like I said, this is like a master class mm -hmm. on how you come up in mm -hmm. the music game. This is how, me and you are, are showing people how this actually works. Yeah. Right around that time, Vlad TV was around, but we hadn't really had that one big video yet. Mm -hmm. And Joe Bund and Ransom started beefing. Yeah, I was kind of in the middle of that in terms of interviewing Ransom yeah. and everything else like that. And Ransom gave me a video of him slapping Joe Bund's man like, on go, the porch. When he was like, go get that nigga. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We put it out. And Gabi, I remember later on, told me how they watched that video hundreds of times. No, nah, it was, yeah, me and Max used to watch it was, all it the videos. It was viral before yeah. viral was, a, was yeah. a word. Yeah. And I remember right around that time, the situation in that Chinatown studio was, was getting dicey for me. I wasn't getting along with the dude that owned it. Me and him started arguing. Yeah. He was getting jealous because I would always have all these artists coming through yeah. and I was starting to come up. And I was like, man, fuck this studio. And I remember Gabi told me that you got in Gabi's ear and said, yo, you got to get Vlad over at SRC. 
Yeah. Got to bring him over there. Like, yeah, this of is course. the next hot dude right now. One million percent. Gabi approached me. Yeah. We packed up our shit. Yeah. And Vlad TV moved into SRC uh-huh. in the Universal building. And became part of the We system. became, I mean, this was a big deal for us. Yeah. We went from a, a grungy little studio in Chinatown yeah. to now being, really having desks in the biggest music company in the yeah. world, which allowed us to have access to all types of artists. Yeah. One million percent. And you're being managed by Gabi. And it was like, yeah. This just shows how relationships are important, how yeah. everyone is helping each other out. And one, one you know what I'm percent. saying? Like one, one everyone million. is playing their position. One million percent. You weren't trying to be a DVD guy anymore. Yeah. I wasn't trying to be a rapper. Yeah. Everyone is. Every, everybody stepped in with, 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 with their goal skill was. set. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Right around that time, mm-hmm. Max B gets found guilty on nine of 11 counts, mm-hmm. including felony murder. Mm-hmm. And he gets sentenced to, was it 75 years? Yeah, 75. When you heard that, what'd you think? I mean, I was, in, I was, inside, the, um, I was inside the courthouse. Damn. When he just, he just turned around, looked at me, I looked at him, and it was just like, yo, I mean, he held it down. It was like, there's hope, you know? Yeah. And, and, and man, I mean, I was with him the whole time when he was thinking about it. It's a crazy situation, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you heard you I mean, you heard people get three to nine, ten, even twenty five. Twenty five sounds crazy. Yeah. But when you so you hear seventy five, you in you in you in unbelief. You in, you you think you somebody speaking Chinese or something. Like you think like like this can't be real, you know? Yeah, I can't imagine that number. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Because people don't live to 75 years old sometimes. I mean, they, he they, was already maybe 30 at the time. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so you're so, talking about getting out 105 years old, like, it's yeah. not a realistic number. It's basically he got life. Yeah, basically he got life, and after he died, he's still going to own his coffin, basically. That's, that's, that's what it is. Pretty much. Pretty much. And you got to understand that this is 2009. It's 2024 yeah. right now. He's still locked up. Yeah, I've been hearing. Oh, he's getting out. This is happening. Yeah, he 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 got his um his thing cut down. He gave the elbow back, and now he's looking like he's gonna come home this year or next year the latest. Right. But he's still locked up. Yeah. Right now, as we speaking. Yeah. He's still in jail. Cell. Yeah. So everyone needs to understand how serious this shit is. Yeah, it is. These are not slaps on the wrist. This is yeah, you, you for do, real. Certain types of things, there are some heinous consequences. Yeah, he he, missed that. he could have been with you the whole time, yeah. blowing up and living in mansions and flying. That's what I be private. saying about this rap shit. Is like this is all we know. Like you know, like for me to for me to lose everybody to it from 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 you know, bro, my, you know my brother getting deported to Max B getting seventy five years. When did your brother get deported? To Morocco and to Chinks. What, what did the deportation happen? That happened later. Yeah, this, I mean, not that time. It just happened like two years ago. Oh, okay, got But it. to Chinks dying, to everything, yeah. it's like we'll, we'll get into all that. It's yeah. like it's like we gave this hip hop shit everything that you know. What I'm saying that we love, like you know what I mean. Like you said, this this game is like is in you. It's like this is all we know. It's like yeah, you know what I'm saying. So yeah, yeah, that that that's, that that was definitely something that stunk when Max B got 75. Of course, of course, because you know that's, that's like your dog. Y'all got all these plans, this and that, and just like. Crush. Right, because I'm sure he had deals on the table and so forth, but who wants to sign someone who's about to yeah. potentially get yeah. life in prison? But when they snatched everything away from him, they snatched everything away from me too. Yeah, because you're you're lumped in with him. Yeah. Okay, so that next year, 2010, you put out Mac and Cheese 2. Nicki Minaj is on it, Wiz Khalifa, Big Sean, Currency, yeah. Nipsey Hustle. Yeah. How are you parlaying all these relationships? Because this, I feel, has like been your superpower since day one. Yeah, I mean, honestly, Nikki, she just loved the song. You know what I'm saying? Um, I met Nikki, I think, a couple times because she was with Fendi. And I think we we met around that time, and I was like, yo, I need a verse on this song. Because she did that. She did the Freak song on my first album. Oh, I mean, we always had a great relationship. You know what I'm saying? We always had a great relationship. Um, Nipsey Hussle, who used to come to New York, we used to go to my man Austin's studio. And um, Austin used to have, um, shout out to Austin, he's, um, at this moment, he's Post Malone manager. Mm. So shout out to my guy Austin, he used to have a studio called Electric Field in the city on 54th Street, and I used to just go there and record. And um, I met Wiz Khalifa there, 
I met Nipsey Hussle there. Uh, Wiz Khalifa had brought in Big Sean. I ain't even know Big Sean. But Wiz Khalifa was like, yo, just let him do a verse on this song real quick. So it was a song called I'm On It. It's me, Nipsey, Wiz Khalifa, and Big Sean on that record. Yeah, so. Yeah. They were, and, and honestly, all these guys were just, at that time, they might have been mainstream, but I had more buzz in the street. Aha. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? And I had the East Coast. So um, Wiz used to be, you know, still is a big fan of Max, big fan of the Wave, always listen to our shit. You know what I'm saying? Nipsey Hussle was from the West Coast, so it only made sense for him to do a record with me in the East Coast. Like, we always try to expand. Yeah. So we all, it wasn't like I was getting features with like a, a Kanye at the time or like a Jay-Z at the time. Yeah. It was just like me and my peers. It was just right. like, all okay. Underground rappers in their Yeah, own, this right. is like the guy French yeah, Montana. Newly signed, yeah. Or, exactly. or, or unsigned, but buzzing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, So like this French Montana, he got the Coke Wave mix saves the mac and cheese. He's in the studio. Y'all want to do a record? Like, hell yeah, let's get in the record. So it was like that. Everybody was just like this close with each other. Right, because then you put out, uh, you know, Coke Boys mixtape, which had 3-6 Mafia, Gucci Mane, yeah. Akon, Fat Joe. I drove down to Memphis. Drove? I drove that, to Memphis. What is that, like a 15-hour drive? Yeah, like I had three people that was on the run in the car with me. <laughs> <laughs> we, were, we was getting blasted on the road. We got pulled over. We went to go see Juicy J. Uh Project Pat, yeah, and and we did the co- uh, cocaine mafia mixtape, right? Exactly. Yep. And then you drop Chopper Chopper down, yeah, with Waka Flocka, yeah. And that became your first hit down south. Down south, yes. New York was not playing my records, right? So I went down south, and I went. I did the mixtape with, with with Three Six Mafia. Mm-hmm. Then I went. Then I went down south and I dropped Chopper Chopper down. Yeah. And I dropped Chopper Chopper down. The record was so crazy. Then um, Ross jumped on it, mm-hmm. and down south was just like I remember Flex calling me like, "Yo, I'm asking him was the biggest record in Miami." They're like, "Is this record called Chopper Chopper down?" I was like, "By who?" They're like French Montana, and he then Flex was like, "Yo, we're not even playing him up here." So that, that's how that went. Like. Was this around the time that you signed in terms of a management deal with uh, Waka Flocka's mom, yeah. Deb, Deb Atney? Yeah. Right. She was man- managing Gucci Mane. Mm-hmm. Was Nicki Minaj was being managed at the same time or she was managed before by Deb? Um, Nicki Minaj was managed before. Okay. She had already left by that yeah. time. Yeah. Right. Later on, things went real south with yeah. Deb. She ended up suing you. I think yeah. she won a $2 million settlement or, or, or payment yeah. or something. All that got worked out eventually? Yeah, all that got worked out. Just miscommunication. Gotcha. Yeah. I know Deb. Deb's cool people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Deb, man. I mean, look, like I like I said, same thing with Akon, you know? These people, they all gave me an opportunity. You know what I'm saying? Like, family fight. Yeah. Friends fight. Brothers fight. Everybody fight. Well, then in 2011, mm-hmm. you dropped Shot Collar. Yeah. Was that your first, like, kind of hit song in a way in terms of like there was not trying to let me make it there was not i was i was fighting since 2002 at this point when i dropped my first cocaine city dvd that's cocaine city the deal with akon the mix save with the three six you're still unsigned at this point still unsigned yeah the straight cash i'm doing shows i'm i have to chop it down i was getting 15 000 20 000 a night because i had that i had straight cash i had the mixtapes with Max B. I had my mac and cheese mixtape. I had New York Minute. Yeah. I had like a full a full clip. So I was I would get twenty thousand a night. You know what I'm saying like people knew who I was. Right. You know what I'm saying? But no so, deal. No deal. No nothing. No real radio play. No nothing. New York yeah. wasn't playing me. I had to go down south, make chop it down. I threw. I did three remixes to it. I had Waka on it. I had fucking Ross on it. I had three six on it. So when 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 Shot Caller came out. It, it had to be an undeniable hit that people was like, this guy just don't give up. Just let him in. <laughs> and that's how that moment was. It was just like, look, we counted him out. He locked in, this, this, and that. And that was the moment. That was the moment when I was like, okay, I'm in the game now. Right. After that, yeah. that's when the real deals started coming on the table. Yeah. Because I remember I was at SRC. 
Mm -hmm. I remember we were sitting in Steve Rifkin's office. Steve was out of town like usual. Yeah. And you were telling me about the various deals that were on the table. It was like Puffy had a deal on the table. Kanye had a deal on the table. Rock Nation Jay-Z, had a deal on yeah. the table. And I'm sure there were some other ones also yeah. that were floating I came, around. I came to Steve Rifkin when I had Chopper it, Chopper it Down. Mm-hmm. I walked in the office. It was him and Gabby. Yep. And, and Gabby was manager. I was like, yo, Steve, give me $200,000. Let me go make music. You know what I'm saying? Just let me. Steve was like, no, nah, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Never got it. Never got it. I dropped Which is funny called. because Gabby's the president yeah. Of SRC. Steve is like the CEO. But yeah, so I don't know what type but, but, of weird. But Steve makes the final call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I asked for 200000 you know what I'm saying? It. And and it's like, and and I dropped Shot Caller like like three months after that. Like I was, like my, my rise was like this. Like little by little, but going up, going up. Right. But everyone has to understand that right around that time, Drake had a chance to sign to SRC. Mm-hmm. And I think like, he wanted like two million, and they gave him like one point five, and he was like, "Nah, I don't remember what the exact numbers yeah. were." But it was there was a lot of people that I'm sure yeah. Steve Rifkin regrets not signing. But he also signed a lot of good ones. So he, he signed Akon, some Wu Tang, Wu Tang, Big Pun, yeah, Three Six Mafia, David Banner, Remy Ma. Right, you don't you don't really know. Yeah, hindsight is twenty twenty. You could yeah. kick yourself, but you could also say who who knew. Yeah, There's exactly. also a lot of people he signed that went nowhere. Exactly. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name them. Yeah, but yeah. I'll, I got to see so many artists get signed. I just SRC. thought I was gonna get the red carpet because Gabby was my manager, so and he it was matter. the president. Yeah. It didn't I matter. mean, well, because it's a big gamble when you sign yeah. somebody. Yeah. Because not only do you sign them, that's why I came to him with two hundred thousand. It's like, bro, like this is like nothing. It's like fucking tax write off you. Right. Yeah. But he also probably has to spend about a million to promote you to. Yeah, to get to a point. Yeah, so it's it's a big it's a big play. It's not yeah, just two hundred thousand. But then it didn't make sense. I asked him for two hundred thousand. Fast forward ten years later, now he works with me helping God manage me. Right, funny, right? So it's like <laughs> <laughs> it's like yo, bro, you didn't want to give me the money. Now ten years later, you work with Gabby to manage me. It's like, right. bro, nah, why, it's why funny, I believe right? now? Yeah, I feel you. So shot collar comes out like like we said. And now you have real deals on the table. And out of all those, mm-hmm. you go with Diddy. Um, that's not how it really went. Was it Diddy? Was it Bad Boy MMG? Yeah, I went to go see Ross. And Ross was like, I got an opportunity for you. I don't have the money for you, but I got the opportunity. I guess because the same thing Meek did, the same thing Wale did. I guess whatever the way his the situation, his, his label was, it, he wasn't trying to give me the money I wanted. And I wanted to like, a whole bunch of money. and he, But he was like, look, let's do it like this. Let's call Puff and let's get him to give you the bag. You can still be MMG slash, you know what I'm saying? Bad, Bad boy. boy. Coke boys, yep. Right. How much money did you get? Two million. Okay. Yeah. From Puff? From from um, Interscope. Interscope. Yeah. Bad boy. Yeah. MMG, the whole MMG. shit. MMG. How did that feel to be grinding? Because at this point, this is 10 years in. I mean, by, honestly, by the time I got it, I didn't even, it was just like overdue. You know, like when you, you know, Allah always give you things like when, you, when you're ready for them, never when you want them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, when I got it, I was ready to work. Right. But I'm glad I got it at that time because after Shot Caller, I had missiles. Yeah. So maybe if I'd have got it before, I'd have probably, you know, I'd have had chop it down. Then I would, like, it, it just happened at the right time. Exactly. And you and Puff became very close over the years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he called you like his guardian angel and stuff like that. Like, no, but he was my dog. He was yeah. my dog. I mean, we was we was doing a lot of business together. You know what I'm saying? We were doing a lot of business together. And and you know, he was he was somebody that was making money without rapping. Yeah, a lot of money. And I kind of took a liking to that because who the fuck wants to rap their whole career? Uh. You know what I'm saying? Even you know, when I see artists, it's not not, not taking no breaks. Because it comes with a lot. You know what I'm saying? Rapping comes with a lot. Especially when when you're dropping albums, clearances, this, that, videos, yeah. this. It's like it's like dropping an album is like having a baby. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and that's 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 what, 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 what it basically is. So I was taking a lot of liking to not, to not rapping. So I was learning. That's why I got the French Vanilla Ciroc with him and all the other things that I was getting done. So... I was, I was taking a lot of notes. And you know, right around the time that you're signing, 
SRC is essentially closing up shop. Yeah. So we had to move out. Yeah. And I, Vlad TV had to go to this next chapter. Yeah. And, uh, you know. That so motherfucker we, never gave me credit for bringing you there. Well, I'm giving it to you now. Oh, thank you. Thank you, yeah. my brother. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Absolutely. So it was like me and you at that point had kind yeah. of weren't around each other yeah. on a regular basis. And you're doing your career. I'm doing my career. Yeah. And so forth. And that's when I feel things started to just take off for you. Yeah. Stay Scheming was the first monster record? Um, I think as soon as I signed my deal, yeah. I went to Ross Crib, we recorded. Right. And Stay Scheming came out of that. So I think that was. Right. And Drake is on that record. Drake is on that record. I remember um I remember um on Ross Ross um telling me to come by the crib and um I went and he was like, Yo, I played Drake the whole album and he was trying to get Drake on another song. But when Drake heard that Stay Scheme and he was just like, yo, this is like a street record, but with a hook. But, you know, but when we did it, me and Ross did it, we wasn't even like, it was just like, like in the mood. Like it wasn't like me and him were just talking our shit, this and that. So it wasn't, we wasn't expecting it to be that big. Put it like right. that. But then came your single, Pop That. Right after. You, Drake, mm -hmm. Lil Wayne, mm -hmm. and Rick Ross again. Mm hmm the song goes platinum, mm -hmm. and you're off to the races. Song go platinum, then I drop "I Ain't Worried About Nothing." Yeah, like 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 two months right after. Right, right. I remember there's a little bit of drama behind the pop that record because you sampled Luke. Yeah. On the hook. Yeah. And I remember Luke publicly came out and was like, "Yo, I never got paid for this. This is illegal." Yeah. But. What people don't understand was that Luke had filed for bankruptcy a few years before that. Oh, I know that. Yeah, Luke had filed for bankruptcy and had to essentially sell his whole catalog. To somebody else, He got yeah. picked up by this by his Jewish lawyer. Yeah, 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 crazy. <laughs> so he owned that whole catalog, so you just licensed it from the owner. Yeah. I See, I didn't even know all that. Yeah. See, I didn't even, I, I didn't even know all that. So he, I think Uncle Luke has said something about it, and I didn't even know. And I asked Puff. And Puff called Uncle Luke, like, yo. But you gotta remember, I'm a young kid in the game. Right. So I'm like, Chinks Drugs gave me the song. Uh. So Chinks gave me the song in the studio. And I just I just hear a sample. I don't know about Uncle Luke. So we just used it. And I guess he had said something publicly. Yeah. And I was like, yo, Puff, I don't know. This. Like, he was like, I called him. He called him. I guess they, they strained everything out. Well, right. Because I remember you did an interview around that time. Yeah. And he, you were like, I remember this, this was just an ill, ill little statement you said. We paid for that record. Yeah. Paying for something that you don't own, that's extortion. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what do you want me to do? Pay uh, for it twice? I already oh, paid yeah, for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not going to extort me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's, probably, that's probably how I looked at it, because I didn't know, I know, I know what it was. Exactly. Yeah. But now you have a platinum single. Yeah. Your platinum single. Yeah. Featuring other people. Yeah. Featuring essentially the biggest rappers in the game at yeah. that point. Yeah. And now. Yeah. And, and yeah, to this day, they still yeah. are pretty much the biggest rappers yeah. in the game. Then you make it on the Double XL uh, freshman class, yeah. 2012, which includes Future, Kid Ink, Danny Brown, mm -hmm. Macklemore, Don Tripp, Hobson, Iggy Azalea, Roscoe Dash, and MGK. Mm -hmm. Some of those are still very yeah. prominent. Some of those are kind of underground. Some of yeah. them aren't rapping anymore, but yeah. it was an interesting little lineup. You know how I go, but we used, we used to see that. Double XL cover was just like how 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 Cocaine City was like. So I knew that I was like, every time we put rappers on it, by the time the next volume come out, like twenty out of twenty three rappers don't even exist no more. Mm. So I kind of knew what that Double XL cover when I was on. I was like, yo, next year, man, half of these people might not even be like, you know. Yeah, man. I mean, shout out to them all, man. Yeah, I mean, staying in the rap game is one of the hardest jobs to do. Yeah, but well, that's how it was with me though. Like when I did Chop It Down. I did Shot Caller. Shot Caller was a song that I did by myself. Then when I did Stay Scheming and Pop That, people was like, these songs too big, he can't do a record by himself. Then I dropped, I ain't worried about nothing. Boom. Yeah. So I've been going through that shit like my whole career, like, right. you know. But but you are, I mean, to be fair, every every artist is different. You're someone that gets a lot of features. Yeah. 
Some people don't want no features. Yeah. Right? Some people are like, well, some, my record, you well, know, like, people, look at J. Cole, for example. J. Yeah. Cole doesn't is not feature heavy. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. look at his albums, it's J. Cole all the yeah. way through. No. Other rappers like Rich the Kid is every song got two or three features. Yeah, yeah. Hey, man, listen, whatever works. Yeah, yeah, yeah But definitely. people always like to poke, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah, whatever. Of they do it to me, they do it to you. Yeah, That's yeah, life. yeah, of course. And then I remember right around that time, you went back to Morocco for the first time in 17 years. Mm-hmm. Your dad didn't even know you were coming. Yeah, yeah, he did. So what was it like to see your dad, who essentially abandoned your family? Yeah. For the first time. And you brought your, yeah. your younger brother with you also. Yeah, yeah. What was I that I mean, like? the same thing I told you when I walked in here earlier. Like, if, if Allah can forgive us, then who am I not to forgive? You only get two parents. I seen, I seen a lot of my friends that never forgave their parents. And when their parents died, it was too late to forgive. Hmm. You know? And, and you know... Um, and I'm a student. I'm a student of life. You know what I'm saying? I learn life. I, I try. I try to do it all because I'm. I, everything I do is not for me. Mm-hmm. I do everything for the higher power. So, you know, if, if 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 I live for me, then I'm not. I'm not on the right track. Well, didn't you mention at one point that your dad tried to hit you up for a bunch of money? Yeah, yeah. He tried to hit me for a bunch of money. I mean, it happens to everybody that's famous. You know what I'm saying? I, but he was. I guess he was. Uh, with a, he started going out with a female that was telling him why your son got you living like this. But she also don't know that how he left us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, But when I went back, as soon as I seen him, I dropped money in his bag. I made sure he was good, I, you know. Yeah. You know, that's, that's your father, man. You ain't going to get another one. Right. 2013, the debut album comes out, Excuse My French, mm-hmm. featuring Diddy, Nicki. Number one hip-hop album. Drake, owl. Ace Hood, Lil Wayne. Birdman, Weekend, yeah. Rick Ross, Two Chains, Max B, Neo, Machine Gun Kelly, Raekwon, Scarface, Snoop Dogg. Uh-huh. Remember what I said about the yeah. feature heavy? Exactly. It's your thing. Yeah, I'm Rock, a cool, man, lean into it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you yeah. know, I'm a cool cat, man. Everybody like me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I love, I love, I love bringing magic out of people, you know? Number four on Billboard. Yeah. Number one hip-hop album. Number one hip-hop album. Yeah. How did it feel? This is man. How many years? Uh, Eleven years since you started. Yeah, bro. Because you think over about, a decade. Because you think because you think about it when you first start rapping, you just want people down a block to know your name. You know what I'm saying? You're not really thinking about platinum albums and 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 platinum singles and things like that. So it was an excitement, and you know I miss my brother so much. I dropped it on his birthday, Max B birthday. Mm-hmm. I dropped it on Max B. Biggest small birthday I remember it was it was May, and it had the biggest singles. The album came out, it had the biggest single on it, and it was just it was it was it was a great time to be alive. Mm-hmm. With the success, problems start, and I think that same year your tour bus got shot at, mm-hmm. and one person ended up dying. Yeah, can you talk about that situation? Um. I think we was just in the, the wrong place at the wrong time, and um, I mean, look, man, we in we in we in the hip hop game. Is that's not the first that that wasn't the first one, and and it wasn't the last one after that. You know, who just, died exactly? It was it was a friend that came with a friend that came with a friend that you know entourage. Well, you, you didn't actually know. No, him. I didn't. I didn't really know. Him. He came with somebody, and I felt so bad. So I bet, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, but, but honestly, it's like. When people come around, you don't know who they have problems with. This person had problems with this person. I say that he he was the one that had the problem, but it might have been other people that had problems with other people or this and that. So you never know. Like that's why I stopped hanging around with so many people because oh, oh yeah, no, you got to keep a small circle. Yeah, nobody's telling you about their problems when they come around you. Yeah, everybody th- think they're escaping their problems, and you end up getting shot at because you know that's that that's the number one thing I had to learn. All right. So you were in the tour bus when this happened. Um. Yeah, I was on a tour bus. Yep. So you were actually seeing the bullets fly, hit the bus, and everything else like that. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah. Okay, so that next year, two thousand fourteen, DJ Khaled's "They Don't Love You No More," mm-hmm. featuring you, mm-hmm. Jay Cross, Meek, and Jay Z. That was my first feature with Jay Z. You have a song with Jay Z now. Yeah. How did that feel when that really sunk in? I mean, it was just a blessing, you know. 
It's like it was a blessing to have a record with Jay Z. Um, at that point, at that point, I was on I was on fire, so I was just like, you know, it is what it is. You could be on fire and never get a Jay Z feature. I'm just saying, Jay Z is you can't buy a Jay Z feature. Yeah, right. Yeah. You can't go how much for a verse. Yeah, there's no price tag on that. Yeah, he has to want to do that record. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So that's what I'm saying. And 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 the hook is the most important part of the song. So if the hook ain't right, that mean the, the you know what I mean I was on the hook of the record. So yeah, he had to hear it and he was like, you know what, this is this one of those. Mm -hmm. Now I remember I interviewed Trina. Yeah, and you guys were in a relationship. At some point. Yeah, we were cool at that point. Yeah. She said that when you came to Miami, you would stay with her. Yeah. No, no, it was real cool at that point. It was, it was no. a real, you yeah, know, it was a real thing. She spoke highly of you. No, I speak highly of her every time, too. Yeah. Well, me and French was never in a relationship. We were friends. He was a great friend of mine. Were. And um, I just think sometimes in a friendship, you need to learn the friend. You need to build with that person to make sure this is the person that you really want to be around and a person that you're giving your energy and your time to. You're with almost every single day for almost two years. Uh, she introduced you to the Kardashians. Hell no. No? Hell no. That's not true. Okay. Hell no. I, will, um, I met I met Chloe when I went to a uh, studio session with Ross. Uh, okay. Chloe was actually in the studio, her and Scott Disick, with Ross and Meek Mill. That's how you met Chloe. Yeah, because at one point you started dating Chloe. Yeah, how was I that? met I met I met her that night. Actually, I met her that night. That's how it happened. I met her that night with um, with Ross and Meek, because she had went to like a Ross concert or something earlier in that day. Mm -hmm. Um, and I went there. I didn't get her number at the studio. I went back to um. I went back to my crib, and I had a puff. I'm like, yo, I saw Chloe. I want her to come with me to this thing that, that I had. Because when I, when I saw her in the studio, I asked her, I was like, yo, you want to come with me to this show? She was like, yeah. But I never grabbed her number right there. Mm -hmm. I had a puff. I'm like, yo, you got her number? And Puff sent her a text, like, yo, French, what's your number? She was like, give it to him. Then I got her number. I texted her, and we started, you know, we started kicking it. Yeah, I think uh, you and me were at a... Puffy's son's birthday party in LA. Yeah. And the two of you were hanging out. I remember you yeah, guys yeah. introduced us. Yeah, yeah. At that point. I was like, oh, can I take a picture with her? And you're like, no, no, no. She <laughs> don't take pictures. Like, things are real, yeah, yeah, you was, know, that was, that was serious low. with the Kardashians and pictures. No, nah, nah, it was low key. It was very low key. But yeah, I remember I, the, the only time I met her was with, with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that one night. Um, and it seemed like you guys got a little serious. I think she even said that, you know, she'd love to marry you at one point. Yeah. What happened? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Because um, you were going through a divorce at this time. Yeah, no, this, this is way after. Oh, is it? Because, yeah. well, I think you settled the divorce right around that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I was, yeah, I went through my divorce. Then, you know, I think I was just, I was just having fun. You know what I'm saying? I think I was having fun with life and, and, and. You weren't ready to settle down. Yeah, I think I just came from a five-year relationship, and I was just, you know, I was moving this and that. But you know, for for the for the time I spent with all of them, you know, I you know I appreciate every moment of it. But was and it I was just, I yeah, I was just, I had too much things to accomplish, Fair too much to do. Now, at one point, right around 2015, you and Fifty Cent started going at it. Mm -hmm. What was that over? Because I never quite understood it. I don't even remember. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I don't even remember, but but honestly, like after he dropped that BMF, like I told him, I sent me and him and got no problems, man. I, you right. know, that's, that's my favorite show. Right. I feel like Fifty kind of went light on you compared to what he did to other people. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you know, when I was coming up, me and Fifth had a, had, a, had you know yeah. had a friendship. You know what I'm saying? So it was cool. It wasn't. We just be joking around here and there. Listen, there were times where 50 was mad at me. Yeah. And now, from what I understand, me and 50 are in a decent place. Because, you know, me and Tony Yayo rock with each other. He's yeah. He's a regular on my show. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, shout out to Yayo, man. Yayo, yeah. man. Yeah, yeah he my shouted dog. you out. <laughs> shout out to my the, dog, Yayo, man. The video that made its yeah. rounds on social media. He's definitely, he's de Yayo was definitely one of them people that when me and Max B was doing our thing. He showed he, up on a record he, early he, on. He, 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 yeah, he's yeah, definitely. He definitely one of them people that got his ears to the streets early, and he definitely called me and Max B, mm -hmm. and he was like, 
Yo, pull up. Let's just do the song. He 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 actually was on the first coke wave. Yeah. Before everybody started jumping on the wave, he was one, he was one of the first people. To, he hit us before we was we was here. So yeah, we, you know we always appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Yayo. Listen, like everyone has a superpower, right? Yeah. Everyone's great at something, mm-hmm. and Yayo's superpower is loyalty. Yeah. Like when when Yayo fucks with you. Yeah. He will go to the ends of the earth. Yeah. He will let you know. If anyone yeah. has a problem with you, he will he will not let anyone around slander your name. He'll yeah. stand up like you know. Yale rocks with me now, and like it's interesting what our relationship is now. Yeah, because at one point me and Yale had problems. Yeah, but people get over shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like a lot yeah. of these a lot of these beefs get sort of blown out because they get into social media and whatever. But yeah, most times the conversation and business on top of that usually fixes all that. Yeah, but you gotta remember like back in the days like. Cocaine City, like I used to be in the office on 30th Street, right across the street from the garden. Mm. I used to go in there and kick it with the offices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to go in there and yeah, just kick it with, kick it with, you know what I'm saying? Kick it with them. And Fifth used to be doing the Pimp and Curly. And, and, <laughs> yeah, right. and Yayo yeah, was in there. Rest in peace, my, my, Maserati Fox. And yeah. It was just like we all, we all, you know, I was on a come up when it was flaming hot. Right, yeah. And I was, was a superstar. By the yeah, 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 yeah. It was, it was just, you know, just a lot of memories there. Exactly. Exactly. Well, Ching's Drugs was your man. Yeah. You guys were always real tight. And I remember we did an interview with him in 2015. Mm-hmm. And I think that ended up being his last interview. Yeah. I realized I had the gift for rap, and I was saying, like, junior high school. I started taking it seriously at yeah, about seventh grade. You know what I'm saying? I started to take the money that I was hustling with. You know what I'm saying? I was making off of hustling and I would take that money and put it into the studio and you know what I'm saying, put my money back into myself. And, you know what I'm saying? I started that at a young age and I never stopped since then. Because he ended up getting killed that year. Mm-hmm. What was the situation around that? Man, nobody knew. Really? Yeah, nobody. So no one ever got convicted or anything? I mean, somebody like got convicted, but, okay. until, but until then, nobody knew. It was a situation that he had in the past that had nothing to do with, like, by the time. It's like things like that in life. Just because you change your life and you and you decide to do positive things and switch your whole life around, it doesn't mean that that kid you you know you stole that candy from in fucking junior high school is not they forgot about it and it, like you know it's like this we do we come from a long life of negativity that certain shit gonna catch up to you yeah and it's like just because you changed your life for the past five years doesn't mean you ain't spent twenty years doing dirt so I guess it was early situations I don't know about yeah. I still don't understand I don't know what's going on you know and 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 that's. When I got to the bottom of it, that's that's what I got to find out. I mean, I interviewed Daryl Strawberry yeah. recently, you know, who has like three World Series rings and everything. And he said something that really stuck with me. He said, you could pick your sins, but you can't pick your consequences. Yeah. So you could do whatever you want to do. Yeah. But you don't know what's going to happen afterwards. Yeah. Just keep that in mind as you go through life. Yeah. You don't know when that thing from 20 years ago is going to catch up. Yeah. You, you, you've you forgotten about it, gotten over it. You're a different person. You've moved on, but... Exactly. There might still be a consequence attached to that. Exactly. Because the way it happened, it didn't make sense. You know what I'm saying? It was just like him chilling at 4 a.m. With, with security, leaving. The way it happened, it just sounded like somebody had it out for him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then when we got we got to the bottom of it, it was. How, how bad did that hit you when you found out? Well, I was like... First you lose Max, then Chinks is like your right hand is like you lose all motivation to make music. For, just fuck the music. You lose you lose all motivation in life in general. Cause you're like if somebody could just snatch my right and my left hand off of me, then the, yeah, what you, you know what I'm saying? What like you got you, left, yeah, yeah. So it's like I'm still standing. It's like I'm losing everybody around me. Yeah, it's like it's like that shit crushes you. You know what I'm saying? You crush because now the people. That motivated me to make music and not hear. So we're like, and these are my dogs that chill with me every day. Like when I wake up, I call Ching. Like yo, pull up this. Max, the same thing. We damn near live together. So it's definitely a tragic. Yeah, man, sad situation. I, I've yeah. always liked the guy. We, yeah, we, we had him on Vlad TV. Yeah, right. I wouldn't have nah, done that been, if, nah. I didn't, if I wasn't been, fucking with him. Been through it, Vlad. Yeah, sad, sad. I mean, and it's like. 
was that the first person we interviewed who died violently after our yeah. interview? It, it may have been. Mm -hmm. It may have been. I mean, and since then, you have Young Greatness. Mm -hmm. You have FBG Duck. No. You, you have a lot of people, man. You have a lot of people who died violently. Did you ever interview Maserati Fox? Uh, I knew him, but I'm not sure if I interviewed him. But yeah, another one who, someone yeah. I knew. Yeah, he was probably on Vlad TV at one point. Yeah. I mean, I've done the interview myself. But yeah, no, a, lo a lot of people, man. A yeah. lot. Way too many. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. W way too many. Well, that year, Kanye's All Day mm -hmm. ended up getting nominated for a Grammy. Yeah. Are you on that record? No, I produced it. You produced it. Yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So well, there's a lot of producers on there, right? I remember like, yeah. it's like, I looked it up. There's... Yeah, I shot the Chloe on that record. We went to go see Kanye, me and her. Okay. Me and her went to go see Kanye. He had a, right. he, he had a crib on a... Um, in Beverly Hills somewhere. And he was he was he was recording I'm about winning now. And me and her sitting down and we we were supposed to do a song, me and him. Yeah. And Chloe was and I was playing beats. Chloe Chloe told Kanye, she was like, take one of these fucking beats and do them. I'm like this is how she was talking to him. <laughs> she was like, she, she talking to him like that in front of everybody. She was like, take one of these fucking beats and do them right now. I'm like, yo, you wildin'. She was dead serious. And he went and he rapped over three of those beats uh. that I had on the computer. And one of them beats ended up being a single. That's how crazy it is. Right. I'm looking at this song. Yeah. And Songwriters and producers is like a mile long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kanye, Paul McCartney. Yeah. Uh, Sean Combs, Mike Dean. Oh, yeah, he. You. He, yeah, he has uh, everybody. Travis Scott, Plain Pat. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, no, but it's I, just... I, yeah, I, but I, I walked in and I gave him the beat. Right. No, I understand. I'm not. I'm not downplaying. I'm yeah. just saying that by the time it was done, no, but, a lot not, of no, he does, but, yeah. but he does that. But I could easily like be like, no, I don't want nobody on my shit. Yeah. But well, I, you, you know, sure, I'm not. I'm well, not. I'm not one of them people that need the money. So right. it's just like, all right, just give me my credit. Is that when you met Kanye around that time? No, I met Kanye when I when I dropped Shot Caller. Oh, when he was trying to sign you back then. Yeah, he, uh -huh. he called okay. me and he... Deb was trying to get me to sign with Kanye. Ah. Which would have... That could have really worked out. That was that was Deb's choice for me. Deb was like, yo, go with Kanye, don't go with Puff. You know what I'm saying? But when, I remember when I met up with Kanye, he invited me to bre breakfast. It was mad early. I wanted to go meet him mad early. So I, I, was, I was sitting there talking to him and he was just like, the whole time he was talking about his vision, this and that, he had good music, this and that. But then at the end of the conversation, I realized I was just sitting there and 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 Kanye was just talking about like the fashion and everything that he was gonna do. And I was like, yo, how am I gonna hit you up? He was like, here's my email. <laughs> he was that phone. Yeah, he's like, here's my email. This and I was like, all right. I, I for me it was more especially how it was coming up, it was more, me and Ross had like a real friendship. Me and Puff, me and, you know, Wayne, Drake, everybody was like real friendship. And he was talking about he was moving to London when I was talking to him. He was like, yeah, I'm about to move to London. I'm gonna go real hard on the, um, you know, and all this stuff, this and that. He's like, he's gonna move. And I was just like, email you. I'm like, I don't, I don't even have an email. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, but but throughout the time from that time that I sat down with him to now, we became one of the closest friends. So yeah, shout out to, shout out to Kanye. I just dropped the album with two Kanye records on it. So exactly, yeah, exactly. And like I said, that song got nominated for a Grammy. That was your first Grammy nomination. Yeah, that was my first Grammy nomination. Right. Yeah. That next year, you dropped one of my favorite records that you've ever done. Figure it out. Yeah, it's Wave Guys. Oh, the name of the song is Wave Gods? No, nah, the name of the album is Wave Gods. The album is Wave Gods. The yeah. song is Figure It Out. Yeah, Figure It Out. Featuring Kanye and Nas. That was like, <laughs> now that, see? <laughs> now, now you see, so after doing the song with Jay-Z, Nas, Nas um, um, hit me, and he was like, yo, I'm working on this movie, this and that. Woo, woo, woo. I need a record. I just sent him a record. He knocked it out. And I was like, yo, I need to make this my single. And he was like, all right, let's do it. So this is this is a snapple fact. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Kanye and Nas always knew each other. But that day in the video, I remember hopping out the trailer and Nas was outside. He was like, you really got both of us to come to a video shoot. It was like, <laughs> it was one of those moments where it was like, yo, young man, you should be really proud of yourself. You got me and Kanye in the desert. And I was like, that's what one of, that was like one of my, you know, my most proudest moments. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was like, yo, I got the biggest. They was like the biggest at, yeah. at the moment. Absolutely. And it was like right by where they shot Con Air at. So nobody had shot video, shot the E for Rivera. Mm. He found a spot, like an overnight thing. Like we had to do it. Kanye was like, I'm flying back from Paris. That's when I took like one of the Kanye Yeezys that never dropped. And somebody stole them from me. <laughs> yeah, but that was like one of the moments. And after that, after that song, Kanye and Nas got together and did their album. So I feel proud of putting them together. Right. Well, and then that same year, all the way up. Oh, yeah. You, Fat Joe, mm -hmm. Remy Ma, Jay-Z jumped on the remix, right? Yeah, so that was my second Jay-Z. Exactly. Yeah. And that song gets nominated for two Grammys. Yeah. So now you're back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Nominated for Grammys again. Yeah. Didn't win, unfortunately. Yeah. But it was like an anthem. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In New York. Exactly. Right around that time, some pictures came out where you were on vacation with Iggy Azalea. Oh, my God. I was living my life, man. You were living your life. Was yeah. that a, a long-term thing or just a... Man, shout out to Iggy. She's, she's a beautiful person. We was kicking it for a little bit. And yeah, I mean, yeah. it was last a couple months. There you go. But shout out to Iggy, man. She's one of the best people. Yep. So I guess right around that time... You were supposed to drop an album, but it got leaked. So you ended up just dropping on, on a mixtape? Yeah, I was supposed to drop an album, but it got but it got leaked. I was supposed to drop Mac and Cheese 4 mixtape. Yeah. It got leaked. So I scrapped it. Uh-huh. And I just went straight to Jungle Rules. Exactly. That's your second album. That's my second album. Number three on Billboard. Number three so on Billboard. So you kind of yeah. jumped up a spot. Yeah. For the last one. Yeah. And that had Future, Travis Scott, The Weeknd. Yeah. Pharrell. Young Thug, Quavo, T.I., Sway Lee. Yeah. So you had a few singles on there. Uh-huh. No Pressure was one of the singles. Yeah. Featuring Future. Mm-hmm. That did pretty well. Mm-hmm. But then, Unforgettable. Mm-hmm. Featuring Sway Lee. Yeah. Did you have any idea what you had on your hands? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I, def I definitely knew what I had. Right. Anybody I tell you. Anybody I tell you, I was like this. Who produced that? Um, Mike Will and a couple of other people. I'm, yeah. I'm sure Mike was your best friend right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shout out to Mike <laughs> Will. Shout out to Sway Lee, man. We shared, we shared an incredible moment in hip hop. 3.5 billion streams. Yeah. Diamond. Yeah, 13 million. 13 million albums, I mean, single sold. Yeah. This is something that very few artists. Yeah in the history of music mm -hmm. have ever done. Mm -hmm. You spent 300000 on the video yourself. Mm -hmm. You flew out to Uganda yeah. and filmed it with the kids dancing. Yeah, at that, at that moment when, when, when I grabbed that song, I was at my lowest. I was like, you know, Chinks had just died. Max B was locked up. Um, I was just drinking. I was just like, I was confused. I was shot. I was trying to find my motivation to make music, you know what I'm saying. So that was that was the time where I got what um what Sal, I got with Sal and and um uh, he was, I was like, yeah, you just gotta go in the studio. And I went in the studio for like two weeks, and Jeremiah happened to come in and just play me that record, with Sway Lee on it. Oh, uh. and I was just like, what the fuck is this? As soon as I heard it, I was just like, all right, this is it. This is it. No, I locked in. Because Jeremiah had his single and other people had records and I had records in there. But don't get me wrong, like that album got a bunch of like crazy joints. But that right. No Pressure, Alive, Famous, yeah. Tiptoe. Yeah. It was crazy. But yeah. that that moment That right there was a whole different atmosphere. That moment was like a law came to me and he was like, You just went through a lot. Your friend best friend just died. This happened to you, this happened to you, here's a gift. That's that's how I felt. Like, right. yeah, it was just like, well, because that that record was bigger than hip hop. Yeah, it, it was literally like a universal 
yeah. anthem yeah. in a way. Yeah. I remember at one point, I think you had done an interview and you had talked about the structure of the record mm -hmm. and Sway Lee said that what you said wasn't true. And you know, you know yeah. what I'm talking about? There's a little bit of, not serious back and forth, but a little bit of back and forth between you and Sway Lee. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what exactly was that about? Um, I don't, I don't remember, but I know, but I know after that we became the best of friends, though. Yeah, I mean, yeah. After that we became the best of friends. It was, it was, I forgot, I forget. It was so long ago, but, but what what he did on that record, I think he just caught the Holy Ghost on that record. That like what he did on that record was just, it was, it was just immaculate. Well, yeah, between that record and Sunflower. Yeah. Back to back. Post Malone, uh, Sway ain't got to do nothing else. Yeah. He could just sit in his house and watch TV. For real. Old and gray. Man, that kid is like young Blanket Jackson, man. Yeah. Shout out to him. Crazy. Crazy. Congratulations on that, man. When I saw that, I was like, because like I said, you and me are in the same freshman yeah. class. We came up together doing yeah, our yeah. thing. And to see someone that I knew from the very beginning. Yeah. And from the DVD Cause we era. Because th we thought that Shot Caller was a big moment. Then then Stay Schema came was a big moment. Then Pop That came was that a big shit moment. compared to it. We thought those was like the ceilings of nah. where I could take it. You got to remember, Pop That is $4 million too. Yeah. So it was like those records was is, is, is still culturally in the hip hop. You know what I'm saying? But when you think you don't have another record in you because you just dropped so much, then you catch your biggest one. Right. Well, you dropped a major pop record. Yeah. That was not a hip hop record. Yeah. yeah. It was a pop record. It was Afro before Afro took over. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, then that next year, you and Drake dropped No Stylist? No, it was... No, we dropped No Shopping before that. I caught a, I caught a big wave with me and Kodak. Me and Kodak dropped Lockjaw. Which it was crazy. It's like three three times platinum right now. Okay. Me, me and um, I went to Dominican Republic with Drake, and we did no shopping. It was uh -huh. right. Before, it was right before that. Oh, too. you have no shopping and no stylist. Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I mixed. So up. so before, um, I don't know if it was after or before. I think no, it was before. No shopping was before. Um, unforgettable. And um, Lock Joe was before Unf Unforgettable. And that's when I was like, you know, every year I was like dropping some. But when no when when Unforgettable came, I hit a ceiling that was like, all right, this is what artists talking about that they can't come back from. Yeah, you drop something so big that's like, what are you gonna do next? Yeah, you know. Then me and Drake got together. We did No Stylus, and it was just like another monster. Right. On No Stylus, Drake takes a shot at Kanye. I didn't even know like he. I didn't even know he did that. I didn't even know like what that was. He said, uh, yeah, keeping it G, I told her don't wear no 350s around me. Drake was doing that on Travis records, doing that on my records, Kanye with this on, do this, this and that. It was like... <laughs> it's not my problem. That's yeah. Between y'all. It was just, you right. know. Kanye didn't give you a call after that? Be like, yo. <laughs> I, honestly, that year, everything was so blur. Right. That year, everything was so blur. He might have. I don't remember. That year, right. we was getting so lit and lifted. We was like... And honestly, it's like... We come from such a long life of negativity, bro. It's like, I don't even, people know I don't like dealing with shit like that. It's like, yo, bro, you're a grown ass man. Whatever you say, stand on. Whatever he say, yeah. stand on. Whatever. That's between you. I didn't diss you yeah, on the record. Yeah, yeah. So, I don't, yeah. I don't, as long as I'm not dissing nobody, I can't control that. Right. I remember right around this time, you said how that's when the big checks start coming. And mm -hmm. when your accountant told you how much you're about to pay in taxes. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You just got sick. Yeah, I went back to sleep. Yeah, and you ended up moving to Las Vegas where yeah. you have to pay income tax. Yeah, yeah, I went to Vegas. Yeah, smart move. Big move. Yeah. That was one of the smartest things I ever did in my career. Right. You saved how many millions by then? <laughs> many, many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Right. Yeah. Um, and you became a U.S. citizen around that time. Mm-hmm. So now Man. you're not. That was like that was like one of the yeah one of the moments when you're like, damn, do I do I even care? It was like you became like. A, uh, the American dream from an immigrant and you, you standing there like this, like, you know? Yeah, so it was a beautiful you, bro. Moment. I'm an immigrant too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, I mean, I became a citizen early on, but I have still, my, yeah. Because I have my green card and every time you come through the security, they always pull you in that office. Yeah. So I, I, I remember that one time I had my blue passport and I walked, they didn't pull me into that office. That's when I felt it. I was like, yeah. damn, I'm really American right now. Yeah. 
Well, that same year, Nipsey Hussle died. Yeah. Got killed. You guys had songs together. Yeah. I remember you said that was the reason why you didn't want to go and buy up your own block. Yeah. Because you saw what happened when you just immersed yeah. yourself in but your I went through, but, but I went through what Nipsey went through when you first asked me about getting shot, but getting set up by my own people. Yeah. I guess Nipsey probably never went through that. I went through that. So I knew that I couldn't trust nobody in my neighborhood to build nothing. Yeah, he he felt that everyone loved him. There's and nothing he was doing I was so doing. much, and, and this is the safest place on earth for him. And, yeah, and it being the most dangerous place on earth for him. Yeah, there's nothing that I would build. <laughs> I, there's no amount of money for me to build nothing in the Bronx. Yeah, man, I, I feel like... I will always give back, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I mean, you could give back, but I feel like Man, you 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 gotta progress. You gotta yeah. move on. You know, like shout out to Drake, but the whole no new friends thing I've never subscribed to. Like you yeah. get older, you get you 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 elevate, you get new friends, yeah. you get into new environments mm -hmm. and so forth. And and yeah, man, it was it was sad because I'd interviewed him. We, mm -hmm. we we run into each other, have conversations. Yeah. He's a cool dude, man. It was it was a sad day in LA. Cause I was living in LA, you know, at the time, and it was it was sad. Yeah, you were living in LA, I think, at the time. Exactly. You know, it was it was a sad day. It happened, man. It happened in front of everybody. It was it was it was the year yeah, of the viral. It was, it was it was awful. Yeah, it was around the time where everything started going viral. You bought a Bugatti that year. Mm hmm. One point five million. Mm hmm. You still have it. Yeah, I still have it. Okay. Yeah, I'm still it's in the garage somewhere. Okay. I got the uh, I got the Tesla Plaid. Yeah. Let me, let me know if you want to race one day. From what I understand, my joint's a little, little, little faster than yours. I can't. I don't even like driving. <laughs> Were you and Tiffany Haddish a thing around this time? Me and Tiff, not. We was always cool. We was never a thing. Never just nah. friends? Okay. So that's just yeah, a rumor. That's my dog. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. And in 2020, you and Jim Jones piece it out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Got together, laugh it off, and now you two are cool. Yeah. That's great, man. Hell yeah, man. Was, Considering all the bullshit that happened and man, everything. Man, we shot the that. video, me and Jim, it was like 150 people with him, 150 people with me, and we was just right by Gauchos, and it was like, if something would have happened, no no cops or security, nobody could have done nothing about it. Right. And it just felt all the love, because most of the people that knew him knew me. Yeah. So most people that knew me knew him. It just felt good to bring everybody together. Yeah, I think Jim is still mad at me over some of the interviews I did with you about him back in the day. Yeah. So the fact that you two are cool now, why is he still mad at me? That you gotta really fix that sense. one. You gotta fix that one. I've tried to. Yeah. I've tried. I've talked to people around yeah. him. I was like, yo, have him come in. Like, I need to throw him some money. Like, yeah. yo, it ain't that serious. Yeah. I don't have anything against Jim. I like nah. Jim. Yeah. Like him as an artist. I mean, you're a journalist. You should, you know what I mean? You shouldn't exactly. have to be for nobody. Exactly. Jim, come holler at me, man. Come yeah, on. Exactly. Were you and Young Thug kind of going at it around this time? Yeah, we had a little something, but me and him cool now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we no had, big deal. Yeah, it was a little back and forth. And I remember right around this time, 2020, you said that uh, you did a video shoot with Kodak Black and he growled at you. Yeah, I'm proud of my guy Kodak. He's he's the illest because... What does that even mean? <laughs> Describe to me what happened. Just, it's, it's, bite, it's called Bite Down. It's called Lockjaw. We did a song called right. Lockjaw. And me and my boy used to always be, we, we, we used to always be high. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And he's he's a legend, man. Like, you know, Kodak. Kodak be rapping about where he where he lived. Oh yeah. Put he, it like he's that. One, definitely one of the realists. He lives yeah. the shit that he raps about. Yes. Just got out of jail recently. Yeah. So Yeah. I, I, and I hope that at some point, because I feel like like Kodak is one of these dudes that has had drug problems for a while. Yeah, but I don't even think it's a drug problem. I just think it's the same thing I went through. I think we made it from nothing. We millionaires, we got money. Yeah. And it's just like we having fun. I mean, it's gonna it's gonna come a time when he gonna stop. Hopefully, whenever, yeah. whenever whenever Allah want him to stop, I think he gonna stop. Yeah. I don't think there's nothing that people could tell him to do. I, you know what I mean? Anybody could tell him. I just feel like we all go through it as young millionaires. You know? Yeah. You get all that money and it's like you trying to have some fun. Like what the fuck did I almost kill myself to get to this point for? Like let me just have a little fun with it. But he's smart. Yeah. Well, that same year, Pop Smoke gets killed. Yeah. And I remember hearing an interview where you would just talk to him like maybe a couple of days before. Yeah, yeah, we were supposed to chill that night. Yeah, I spoke to him like two days before. Yeah, he was supposed to have a party at his crib that night. In the Hollywood Hills where he got yeah, killed? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, one of the... 
like we literally like I had his phone number. We you know I'll no. call him, be like, yo, let's do this interview. Where are you at? Like I want to do it to him, you know, do it with him in person. No. I want to be like a remote interview. And every no. time I would call, every time I'd be in New York, he'd be in L.A. I'd come back to L.A., he'd be in New York. And no. it just this kept going for months. In retrospect, I should have just said, fuck it, let's yeah. just do it remotely. But I never did it because I remember okay, I man. congratulated him on the Jack Boys album. I was like, yo, you on the Jack Boy with Travis Scott, who was the biggest thing at the time. Yeah. Like, yo, congrats. Like, oh, thank you so much. He got, gave me that song to get on it. And oh. I, and I was so drunk that, I, uh, like, my verse, I, I'm like, I stuttered throughout my verse. Mm. I was slurring. He was like, yo, do your verse over. This is this, this. By the time, by the time I got a chance to do it, it was already out. Yeah. So, and me and him were supposed to have a tape together. It's crazy. Yeah. I mean, he, he was the, the, king the poster of child of, Drill. The New York drill. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. All these dudes I mean, that he's came the up king after of drill. Him, There's nobody bigger than him in drill. Yeah. I mean, he put Dior on the map, yeah. meaning that, yes, Dior was a brand, but no, nobody in hip hop was wearing that yeah. shit. Now everyone is Dior'd out. Yeah. No, he's the king of drill. He's the king of drill. Rest yeah. in peace, man. Yeah. It, it's, it's sad. And I remember me and his manager, I remember I barked at him real bad this mm -hmm. one time because he reached out to me to interview Pop early on and then he stopped answering his phone. Yeah. And happened. I was like, I was like, you're the reason why Pop Smoke doesn't have a story about his life. Yeah. Because you know, you know how we're doing the interview now, I would have yeah. done something like that with Pop Smoke. Yeah. He died without having one of those. So yeah. no one really knows who he is. Exactly. In terms of his story. Yeah. And that to me is one of my. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Yeah. It's one of my regrets. I mean, rest in peace. Rest in peace. So then that next album comes out. They got amnesia. Yeah. On Epic. Now, did you leave Bad Boy at this point? Yeah. Okay, so you this part, is, this part, is, part this, of ways. This is this is me leaving leaving Bad Boy and Epic. Okay, so it's not on Epic. It's on Epic, but it's my last album. Last album on Epic. Yeah, this is me leaving leaving everything. All right. This is me becoming Puff, a, this is me becoming a free agent. Right. Did you and Puff part on good terms or? Yeah, yeah, yeah great so terms. Because you you fulfilled everything. And, yeah, I fulfilled everything. Right. I made sure everybody got their money. I made sure you know, Rose got his money. I made sure Puff got his money. Make sure Epic got their money. Yeah. Epic's still making money. You know what I'm saying? Everybody <laughs> brush shoulders with made money. Right. You know what I'm saying? And 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 had a ch chance to have a great time. You know what I'm saying? I mean, when people say bad boy curse, you're you're the exception of well, that. I'm blessed on a different level. I came yeah. from Africa. I made it out the <laughs> I made it out the jungle. Right. I'm like a whole different I made it out the Bronx, Africa first. The whole night. Everything, man. It's all love. John Legends on it, Kodak Black, R.I.P. Yeah. Pop Smoke. Yeah, now Dirk. Right that Doja record. Cat, yeah, that Sweetie, Five Eo, Fab, Coil Ray, Forty Two Doug, Ty Dollar Sign, Lotto, yeah, Lil T J, Money Back Yo, <laughs> Tory Lanes, yeah, me and Money, me and me and Kodak Black had another hit off of that too, yeah, La, the uh, Mobstick, exactly, yeah. Now, right around that time, your driver gets robbed. Uh huh. For was it your watch? No, no, it was his watch. I don't even know about that situation. I wasn't even with him. It was a $300,000 Richard Mill watch. I wasn't even with him. Yo, you weren't there. Okay, but it was your driver. No. Do you know who the person is? That's what I'm saying. People just be so, around. So this is just a made-up story? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it was crazy. I was, I'm in you know what I'm talking about, though, right? Yeah, yeah, it was. we was by the Dream Hotel, and somebody came with somebody that came with somebody that came with somebody again, and it's ah. just like, you know? And they, 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 it's, like, it's like this, man. That's how life goes. Everybody want to be around, but as soon as something happened, everybody want to blame and everybody want to do this, bro. This, this, this is the shit that hip hop's come comes with. You know what I'm saying? Like you don't, you never know what's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. Now I remember right around this time, this 2021. You said you were trying to end the beef between Jim Jones and Max B. Yeah, is that squashed? I put it in the air. It's up to Jim and Max. You know what I'm saying? Well, Max is at locked end, up. Man. Yeah, I mean, so, at, the, at the end of the day, when I speak to Max, Max tell me he's he got more shit to worry about. When I speak to Jim, you know what I'm saying? Jim is, is on his own time. So, I mean, they're both grown men. Yeah, but, I mean, Max is locked up. He's been locked up since yeah. 2000 and early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you I don't know. think I, honestly, I don't think nobody trip. I think Jim is, is 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 doing great, man. He's been dropping a lot of great music. Yeah, he's doing his thing. I don't think nobody's even thinking about that. I think everybody's just doing his, their thing. Whenever that situation comes, it's gonna come. Exactly. So that next year, two thousand twenty-two, somebody gets bit by your dog at your house. Sue me for a million and something dollars. It's crazy. Like what? The, who who bit you? A dinosaur? 
Were you even there? Nah. I wasn't so someone there. just came to your house while you weren't there. You, Somebody so, came to my house to clean my pool and I wasn't there. And the dog. Yeah, you know. we had we got the dog signs. It's supposed to say call before you come in. He never called. They just went he got bit and he yeah. wanted two million dollars. Yeah, crazy. Settled for one hundred thirty thousand. I don't even know because I got insurance. Oh, the insurance paid it. Yeah, yeah, I got insurance. Isn't that crazy though? What? Two million dollars. I mean, even one hundred thirty thousand sounds a little crazy. You know, that was the actual number. Man, everybody, everybody becomes a shooter when you becomes a target. You know. Right. So everyone becomes a shooter when you become the target. You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 how it is, man. Everybody, everybody want to. I mean, for him to walk in, he brave. What kind of dog was it? Um, um, a German Shepherd. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Boosie's dog just bit me. Crazy. You saw him? No. <laughs> of course not. It's my <laughs> man. Fuck it wasn't even a it wasn't even a serious bite. Nah, fuck it, was, it was a cane corso. Are you lucky? Yeah. No, nah, it was a, even if it was a serious bite. Lucky. I wasn't sue him. One of my dogs catch. My man. It was my own fault. I, you know, I was petting the dog. The dog seemed a little tense. It was wagging his tail. So I thought, yeah. well, they'll warm up to me. And, <laughs> and you know what they told me? You're the third person this dog has bit this week. Oh wow. <laughs> oh wow. Man, yeah, he probably he yeah, he probably need that dog for the crib. Just... Yeah, you need to keep that dog outside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but no, I would never sue Boosie, man. No, I've no. never seen anyone for a fucking dog bite. Especially if I'm the one petting the dog. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, come on. Exactly. Nah, it's not that serious, man. I hope everybody was like you. I wish. Hey, well, not everyone got money. So exactly. you know, yeah. if you a millionaire's dog suddenly bites you and you're making minimum wage. Yeah. One one million percent. Exactly. Now, I remember at one point, uh, Diddy and Drake have a physical altercation. Mm -hmm. And you said that you actually were the ones that got them to squash their beef. Um, yeah, they had. Um, they both came to my birthday party. Mm -hmm. And I guess they haven't spoken before that. I don't know what happened between them. But me and Drake, we like brothers. Me and Puff like brothers. So when that altercation happened, I was kind of mad that I wasn't there to prevent it. Mm -hmm. But... When I did my birthday party, Drake came. Or Iggy, Iggy Azalea threw me a birthday party on a, on a yacht, mm. and Drake came, and uh, Puff came on the on the boat. Then they just sat down and they just, they just spoke like grown men, and they you know. And after that, they were they they were just you know they were just friends, back friends again. Nice. You and Ruby Rose were mm -hmm. seen hanging out. Yeah. Are you guys a thing or? No, we went out for a little bit. Shout yeah. out to Ruby. Shout out to Ruby. I interviewed her early huh? on. Yeah, yeah, she dope, man. She yeah, dope. Pretty girl. Yeah, yeah, she real dope. And she and she got the rap thing going. Yeah. And I heard she just got sober. I hit her up. I was like, yo, sober look good on you. Mm. You know what I'm saying? But shout out to Ruby. Right. Her she making a lot of OnlyFans money too. So. Yeah, yeah, she makes she yeah she be cashing in. Ruby Ruby is like the leader of like the new wave of females. Mm. That's like you know that's like mixing the whole um, OnlyFans with music and 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 getting paid off. She knows she, she knows her work, so shout out to Ruby. Yeah. And last year you dropped your documentary. No, I didn't drop it. Well, it got it got premiered. Oh, uh, Tribeca. At Tribeca. Yeah, but yeah. It's not out yet. I tried to find yeah, it. It, it comes find out. It. it comes out June this year. Aha. Uh -huh. So we just signed the deal. Uh, with Paramount. Oh, so it's gonna come out on Paramount. Paramount Plus. Plus yeah. Okay. And Robert De Niro hosted the. Uh, yeah, hosted the, the whole thing. Yep. Vin Diesel came. Big deal. Yeah, everybody came. Yeah, shout out to everybody that showed up. I gotta see it. Yeah, it's crazy. I gotta see it. Everything you asking me, that's what I'm saying. It's almost like you watched it. No, I didn't watch it. Yeah, but, but I, I, give me a copy of it. Yeah, I'm gonna I check you. it out. I got you. I'll send you a link before yeah, you drop. Yeah, I'm not gonna leak it out. You no, know me. Gosh. You know what I'm saying? But congrats. Thank and you, uh Drake and Diddy uh co executive producer yeah, also, yeah. right? Dope. Dope. So a Kendrick song mm -hmm. leaked out. Yeah. And it was a different version than the song we all heard because on this version there was a line that says French Montana speaking on me in interviews very cynical dry hating something I don't approve and people are saying it refers to a Breakfast Club interview you did in 2016 yeah. where you basically said the industry the industry is pushing Kendrick as the new face of hip hop I, I was just heated I ain't win a Grammy for, for Unforgettable that's what it was? yeah but Kendrick is my dog like Kendrick actually Kendrick actually was one of the first people to reach out to me when I came to LA. And um and he told me to come by the studio. I went to the studio. I kicked it with him. I had Chloe with me. I played him Don't Panic. And I was trying to get him to do a verse on there. But me and him never really had a problem. 
And it was just that one year when Unforgettable didn't win. And I was just heated at the, at the, at the radio station. He kept on asking me. So it's basically, it's like, you know, like, yo, bro, how he wins, how, how he won all this, Unforgettable ain't win none. Unforgettable was like 13 million sold now. I was basically passionate about my shit. Yeah. And I was just, you know, I was just talking about him because he was the winner at the time. So well, he got a bunch of Grammys. By yeah, that but, time. but at, that, at that moment, he was like, they, he, that, that night was like basically his. Well, this is what I realized about the Grammys, and this is what me and like other high end music professionals have had conversations about. Yeah. If you just look at the Grammys and who wins, yeah. It oftentimes is not the ones that sell the most. Yeah. It's more of like the artsy projects. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They may not sell the 10 times platinum. Yeah. But there's a strong artistic bent yeah. to this. And you can't deny how artistic yeah. Kendrick is. He doesn't sound like any other rapper. Yeah. He doesn't use the same producers. He doesn't get the same features. Yeah. I heard he doesn't even have a cell phone, <laughs> you know, yeah. in his everyday life. No, but I fuck with Kendrick. Yeah. Cause, Cause you gotta you gotta understand, 2013, um, I had to do summer jam. So as I'm driving down to Summer Jam, I got the radio on and they're interviewing him. And they was like, yo, who you wanna see tonight? I remember Kendrick like, yo, I really wanna, I really wanna see French Montana perform. I ain't worried about nothing tonight. But he always showed me love, you know what I'm saying? So I got nothing but love for Kendrick. But just just that one 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 day at the interview, I was just so heated that I ain't win, and he was the winner. And I was just <laughs> like, yo, but I fuck with Kendrick. I fuck, I fuck with the whole um, with the whole team. Man, listen, you'd be hard pressed to find anyone in the entertainment business that doesn't feel underappreciated. Yeah. That doesn't feel like they're not properly paid. You know? Yeah. You watch my Drink Champs interview, and I, you know, I take shots at other media yeah. outlets and stuff like that. Yeah. Because sometimes I, I get in my feelings too. Like, yeah. how the fuck, you know, for example, this artist does an interview with Double XL, but not with me. I'm 10 times bigger than Double XL yeah, right yeah. now. Exactly. Yeah, okay. Yeah, 30 years ago, they were yeah. the, the Bible of hip, or not the Bible, but the biggest name in hip hop, but that's not the case in 2024. My numbers are 100 times as big as them, and this artist is doing here, so I might feel some type of way, but exactly. that's just life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's just life, man. Sure. We all feel this way, and sometimes we lash out, and yeah, yeah. sometimes people catch straight. Yeah, yeah, you know? I, I, I lashed out, but it wasn't even like towards him. It was just towards the situation he right. was in. You know what yeah, I'm saying? But, so. but like I said, well, when shout it comes, out to Kendrick, man. When it comes to these situations with the Grammys, Almost like, you know, when you see like the MGM, the lion, you know, it's art for art's sake. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of times it's it's artists choosing other artists and they're not necessarily looking at the record sales. Yeah, it's, yeah. Not, it's not like the, the, the Viewer's Choice Awards where all the fans get to vote. The, the fans don't vote for the Grammys. Exactly. It's a bunch of other artists. Exactly. So you can't always take it yeah. critically. I mean, we made it. Well, you made it. Come on. We made you it. You can't be mad. You we can't be it. mad. Um. I remember you had posted, it was an offer for a show where you get a million dollars. Yeah. And another artist gets nine million. Yeah. Cross the name of the other artist. Yeah. My guess is Kanye. Uh, Taylor Swift. Oh, Taylor Swift. Yeah. Okay. Exclusive. No. I'm glad to you. That makes total sense. Yeah. I mean, nine So you million. were supposed to perform with Taylor Swift? And they had a show offer for me and Taylor. Her, her nine million, me one million. This was where? In Dubai somewhere? Yeah, somewhere in, 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 in that area? Emirates, yeah. Okay. How many million dollar shows have you done in your life? Not a lot. I need I need some more. <laughs> <laughs> not enough. Got to get those Taylor Swift numbers, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, not enough. You can't, you can't front that not Taylor enough. doesn't deserve it. That's what I'm saying. But yeah. you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm just blessed that 20 years down the line, I'm still getting million dollar offers, you know? Right. Like, I'm, I'm just so happy that I built my career, my name to the point where it's like, you know, it's like people just, they put you here and they don't keep zigzagging you no more. It's like, right. all right, he's here to stay. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Over the years, I've heard that you really built up your investment portfolio. Yeah, yeah. Particularly, is most of your money in real estate? Yeah. How many homes do you own? Oh, like nine. Nine homes. Yeah, but they're all five million and better. Okay, so. I don't want the addresses, obviously, yeah. but the cities. Jersey. Vegas. Okay, Jersey. 
Jersey, New York, New York, Morocco, Vegas. Uh, I said New York. Hidden Hills. Hidden Hills. I said New York. You said New York. Yeah. So that that's five. Three in Morocco. Three in Morocco. Yeah. That's eight. Yeah. Like close to that. Like eight nine. Eight. Yeah. Eight, eight nine. Why do you go three in Morocco? I mean, that's why. That's why I was born. So you can still go back there. Yeah. Okay. Which house or property? Because some of these are are condos, right? Yeah. Which is your absolute favorite? Um, L.A. Aha. The, the Hidden Hills? Yeah, the Hidden Hills one. Okay. And that's worth about how much? Um, Well, the the guy across the street sold his for $40 million, You know what I'm saying? So Around that? Yeah. You know, if if, if I put $3 million into it, I think I could sell it for $40 million. Oh, because this is Selena Gomez's old joint? No, this is Selena Gomez. One. I've been sold. Oh, you've been sold? Yeah. Okay. So you bought it for how much? Uh, I got it for a good price from Paul George. Got it. Oh, Paul yeah. George's old house. Yeah, yeah. But now it's worth forty. It's it's seventeen thousand square feet. Oh, that's big. Yeah, seventeen thousand <laughs> square. That's like yeah. That's what my joint's about seven. Yeah, that's what. It, yeah, two, two and a half times size of mine. Like, yeah, yeah, seventeen thousand square feet. Okay. Do you have your money in the stock market as well? Yeah. Okay, but it's not as big as your real estate portfolio. No. Okay. What was your worst investment? Stock market. Really? Yeah, stock market and FTX. FTX, that's crypto. Yeah, I mean, I lo- I woke up and lost $5 million. Mm. Yeah, because I didn't take my money out on time. Right. So well, now I got to wait I for mean, it. the guy's in prison who was running it. But so. still, I mean, for somebody for somebody that's an artist like me to wake up and lose $5 million, a lot of, a lot of artists don't even got that to wake up to. So it was like, for me to wake up and five million is gone like that, I never experienced that. Yeah, I mean, crypto's a. I never touched crypto just because I. Felt yeah, so that's was, my wor- that's my worst investment to wake yeah. up and lose five million dollars. Yeah. Like I so, cry, but I, that's I, not stocks. I cry tears. Like I, 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 sh- I bet <laughs> I, I shed two tears. Well, yeah, I mean, because yeah, but that's not stocks. Yeah, but it's, nah, crypto's not stocks. It's I, a gamble. No. It's the same thing. Do so you think stocks and crypto are the same thing? Yeah, I mean, if 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 you invest in you know, Amazon or Apple, Correct. like and that's you know, the kind of companies I yeah. invest in. Yeah, yeah, but you're not you're not gonna wake but, up. But if you don't invest in those, which is probably like five to ten, then the rest is all. You know what I'm saying? It go down the hill tomorrow. Right. Well, this is why I invest. Like my companies are like Amazon, Tesla, yeah, yeah. Google. There, there's those. I'm not gonna wake up and be five million the, in the hole. From Chevron. Any of these companies. There's there, there, there's those ten that you could. That right. You could, yeah. Well, even the S and P five hundred. No, because I, I don't want people to think you know. Because I really have always pushed stock investing. I've I've made people like little baby millions just by having conversations with them and telling them how I do it. And they've yeah. turned around and you know bought a ton of Apple stock and have made a ton of money. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So I don't want people. Yeah, to I made think, yeah, yeah I made a couple millions in stocks. Yeah, but I lost I lost money too. So yeah, I mean, listen, uh, two years ago I on paper lost over a million dollars. Mm. In in my portfolio, but then the next year I got way over a million. <laughs> yeah, but I never touched it. But that's how I go though. Yeah, that's, that's the same thing happened to me. I lost a million. I won a million. I lost five million. Yeah, it's just it's just exactly. It gets like you that. gotta. The trick is is to really know how to leave the money mm-hmm. and wait for things to go back. Yeah, up, not to panic. One million. You have percent. to have emotional maturity. Yeah, to invest. What, yeah, one million percent. If every time something goes down, you panic and sell and say I'm never going to buy again. Yeah, yeah, one one million percent. Right, because uh, honestly, investing has changed my entire life. I yeah. would not be where I am today without investing in stocks. So you got to teach me some tricks then. Of course. So let's get to where we are right now. Uh huh. Mac and cheese five. Yeah, number four, top album. The features are insane. Mm hmm. Let's list them out. Kanye, Jid, Dirk, um, Bryson Tiller. Jeremiah, man, the list goes on. You want to keep going? <laughs> yeah, keep going. Uh, St. John, uh-huh. Buju, Buju, Lil Bunta. Wayne, yeah. Lil Baby. Ross. Uh, Rick Ross, West Side Gun. Yep. Uh, Kyle Rich, Jen Carter. Yeah, 41. 41, that is. Um, Mickey Echo. Mm-hmm. 
you pretty much got most of the big names yeah. in hip hop. Yeah, I mean, J. Cole supposed, and Kendrick's not on it. It was supposed to be even more names. Well, Drake was supposed to be on this, right? Yeah, but we're doing something for the documentary. Okay. Was there like 126 songs? Like, what's this whole 126 song thing I keep hearing from um, this album? So the 126 songs, basically five versions, right? Okay. Which is the instrumental, the spread up, the slow down, and the um, acapella. Right now, right now, if you look at Instagram, top five um, most songs that's most used on, on the reels, whatever that shit is, the um the charts there's there's my instrumental up there just from me putting out an instrumental CD. Yeah. If you look at Cardi B new single, if you look at JT new single, everybody is dropping these five versions. You know what I'm saying? Like for the fans, because fans want those versions. If you look at anybody that's doing these new drops. Yeah. But people thought I was doing that so I can get first week numbers, not knowing that I did that for my fans. And those five versions don't even count towards first week numbers. But you know me, I'm not even going to go on the internet and say all that because... Well, right, but it, it does count for your total streams. No, it don't. Oh, it doesn't? No. Okay, because I, I remember, like, for example, like, DDG. Yeah. He he has, like, slow down versions. Yeah. I remember, I think I... I was speaking to someone about this. He has slow down versions of some of his songs. Yeah. And someone explained to me why he puts that on there because... TikTok will use slow down versions yeah. to try to get around the copyright. But so that, you might as well just put out those slow down versions. Like it's, so, it's a so, weird place right yeah, now we're in so, with music. So the so the label idea was drop all these for TikTok for this. For instrument. Rappers like to rap over your beat sometimes. Do this, you know what I'm saying? So it was just an idea to put them out. Like it wasn't an idea to put them out to get first week sales. They they, they don't go towards first week sales. Mm -hmm. So that was never like part of the plan. But since they want to keep talking about that. We're not going to do them no more. Let people go to the, to the end of the fucking song and loop up the two bars they want to rap. So ultimately, with all the different versions and everything else like that, yeah. the album still debuted with number four? Yeah, number four hip-hop album. Number four hip-hop album. And this is not really an album. This is uh -huh. a mixtape. Yeah, it's a mixtape. That's what I'm saying. Number four for a mixtape is like fucking immaculate. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Just drop, dropping a mixtape. But you, you know what's the biggest part about it? It's independent. Okay, so you're fully independent right fully now. Fully independent. Okay. So so the tape is like... People with labels are not even doing fucking 10,000. Like, right. You know well, what I'm saying? Well, what was the first week numbers on it? Well, it was supposed to be like fucking 70,000. But they took away some, some, some shit. But it still ended up at number four. There you have it. Yeah. Is there an album coming out? Yeah, coming out. What's the name? The end of this year is gonna drop with a documentary. Okay, is there a name? Um, I haven't named it yet. Okay. But I'm waiting for it to come to me. I think it might be Casino Liar. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. And you signed D thing. Yeah. Right when he got out of jail. Yeah. Okay. And that was Coke Boys 10K projects. Yeah, Coke Boy 10K, yeah. Exactly. Exactly. I remember he did the uh, the Gillian Wallow interview. Yeah. We had him right there. Yeah, shout out to D-Thing. He's the next hottest thing smoking out of there. Yeah, he's dope. Yeah. He's dope. Like, who are the artists right now at Coke Boys? Uh, it's D-Thing, it's Kenzo B, it's Cheese. It's, uh, that's about it for now. Okay. Building a roster. That's what it is, man. We went through the whole story. 12 years later. 12 years 12 later. 12 years later. And the first time we really get the whole the whole story. Yeah. From start to finish. And like yeah. I said in the very beginning, man, you and I were right there shoulder to shoulder yeah. holding the video camera ourselves. Yeah. Waiting to interview the hot artist of that day for our DVD. Something yeah. that kids today don't even know what that is. We'll never understand. We'll never understand the grind of of starting from the very bottom. Yeah. We were both broke. Mm-hmm. You know, wearing clothes that the clothing labels would give us for free. Yeah. Because we couldn't yeah. afford all the, the Louis and Gucci that we're yeah. wearing these days. Hell yeah, merch. Exactly. Wearing other people's merch. Hell yeah, bro. Living in, you know, small apartments with hip hop dreams, not yeah. knowing how we're gonna get there. Yeah. And now, all these years later, man, we're comfortable. We don't have to worry. Like both of us can stop working if we want to. Yeah. And uh man, listen, I've always been happy 
for your man. success, man. Thank and, you, bro. And uh, nice I show because like... you talk about it when I'm not around. Yeah. And that means more than even telling me. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly, man. So, man, I'm uh, looking forward for to this documentary. Likewise. Looking forward to that new album. Likewise. And, you yeah. know, I, I feel like you have a long business career ahead of you that's probably yeah. going to be outside of music. Yeah, of course. You know what I'm saying? Because now you're sitting on a serious financial base with all yeah. the properties and investments and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. You've actually created multi-generational wealth. Yeah. You know what I mean? And uh, man, Music is just the passion, you know? Exactly. Some things exactly. we don't. Two, two immigrant kids who weren't born in this country, man. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes mm -hmm. we go to the beach. We don't make no money by going there, but that's what we love to do. Exactly. That's what music is for me at this yep. point. That's what it is, man. Until next time. Thank you for having Peace. me, bro.